Hello, and welcome to Agony Island. <laughs> How long have you been preparing that one for? This is, as you might see, the Love Island special. With Rowan and Mariam. Yes. And our Cagnons mm -hmm. back in the garden uh, with cocktails. I know. Pretending it's warm once yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> Love Island has finished a while back. But, um, you know, it's never too late to bring it back up. And these are the last moments it's still warm. And the thing is, we recently found out that one of the Love Island contestants is going on to be an Agony Aunt. So we figured as Agony Aunts, we need to go on Love Island. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, we need to even the play flinch on their, on their uh, content. Yeah. yeah, but sorry, I, I watch more show and it's just like, it's not good advice. It just isn't. So I'm kind of worried, actually. She's going to be putting it out there to the mainstreams. And it's just like, it's not okay. Well, thankfully, our listeners and then the she, to Yes. And then she came out as like feminist as well. So she's like, I'm feminist and I'm giving this advice. But it's just like, it's not good. Like, so I'm a bit nervous. As in like, she's going to make it mainstream, but still call herself fem a feminist. I mean, that's the story of our times. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching all our videos. Like the past two ones really blew up and so many kind words and everything. Some of the, like the, the, there are disabled comments on a lot of our videos, but that's not down to us. That's down to YouTube, for instance. Is that the ones where I say cunt all the time? Oh, possibly. Oh, well, what did they listen through it all? I don't know. Are we going to have to bleep? Are we going to have to come bleepers? No, no. Oh, by the way, there's absolutely a lot of chance that like my fake eyelashes are going to fall through that. Oh, yeah through the episode as such so we've never so done this apologies. before well, yeah well i did it once when i was like 15. i've never done this this is huge i like i i, I can't see properly yeah. <laughs> really yeah like ultimate respect to women that do this all of the time respect I, yeah. but also like what the fuck? why is this like the standard now like i think it's really dark it shouldn't be like it's this it's not the standard not in like every in certain industries i guess but like even oh my god yeah we put so much effort today yeah we both tried to curl our hair <laughs> Next, we already got a theme for the next one. Yeah, because this is like, yeah, anyways, we won't spoil it. But right. that won't be for a good while because I'm away. And in general, like, guys, it, this, like, doesn't look like high production matters as such, but it takes a lot of energy for the, from the both of us to do this and also get our emotional shit together and all of that stuff. These are yes. taxing. Like, and I mean, it does take a whole day just to do the filming and then at Mariam an extra day to do all the techie stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so, oh yeah, so on that note, send us money, please, please, please. To, to cover to cover the, co well, it's the cost of the full eyelashes. Yes, thank you. Not just the tiskies anymore. No. <laughs> but um, but on the some be like, there have been a couple of people that sent us some yes, stuff. Thank you. One in particular, you know who you are. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Seriously, I mean, it, it really wasn't it really wasn't that much. Like it really was I mean, like. It was like 50 pounds each, which is fantastic. But like that's but amazing like, coming from one person. Yes. If all of you who watch it chipped in a couple of quid, I know. we could actually afford our drinking habit. Yes, whereas now we're still very much in the minus, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is not okay. God, I can't pretend that, no, this this is odd. Like I feel my eyes are sticking to it. No, I'm, I'm okay, I'm normal. Okay. Pretend like you're live on camera and therefore you can't do that. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> See, back when we uh, yeah live streamed them, we were never allowed to be this um, finickety. I think we were though. Still, I used to go the whole two hours without going to the toilet once in our first how year. How the fuck? Yeah, how that the fuck? It was, you know, UTI is here I come. But nowadays, <laughs> Mariam chats to you while I go pee, so it's all good. But also, um, we done a podcast as well Ooh. on Radio Free Tote Bag, who are like two American dudes doing very similar thing that we're doing, but in podcast form. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. So we'll put it in the show notes. So you should definitely listen to that and also subscribe to their show. Yep. Dudes actually bothering to do the emotional labor. Yeah. Our favorite we're thing. Always, we're always for that. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for the questions. Uh, way more than we can actually deal with, which is kind of becoming an issue. We still haven't decided, like, what do we do about mm. that? Please, please, please watch our old episodes before yes. you submit a question because yeah. there are a lot of times things that are like yeah I, obviously everyone thinks their individual situation is different but if it boils down to how do i flirt we have a whole playlist on yeah. of that category yeah. so just like please before you submit because we want to give everyone due justice but also you know we don't want to just sound like a broken record yeah totally i mean again um, but thank you so much um, and not to say like oh we've got so many questions mm. that sounded like that i didn't really mean it like that i'm really sorry like to be fair, they're still incredibly varied yeah. and, and incredibly personal. We're still like, we're always in awe. Every time I, you know, I read them, we're still all incredibly emotional. It's just that we, as we said, you know, we work full time and like we're trying to, you know, and, and, and doing so much other activity, as gross as it sounds, stuff apart from this. So it's just so tricky to do this all the time. Yeah. But 
on that note, should we get to our first question? Let's do this. Which is slightly um, funny considering what we're drinking right now. You know, I recently found your show and I really like it, but there's one tiny little thing that's bothering me. Do you seriously like Tisky? To be honest, as a Polish person, I'm kind of impressed you can drink it. <laughs> Um, we are not drinking Campari now to prove you right. It's more because we're in theme with the Love Island thing. But yeah, we like to see. So I, yeah, I get, I've got feelings. Mm. <laughs> so, so first of all, someone also commented under one of our videos being like, whoa, so what, Novara did it now? You guys are doing it? No, 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 guys. Novara were not what the ones. What did Novara do? Well, they have Tisky Sour, the show, right? And they oh. drink Tisky at it on it and and so no Navarre were not the people to make you it know, cool poor squatters but it's constantly well probably but so basically what it is is that uh it's one of the cheapest uh beers either it's a polish lager it's 5.6 percent used to be not anymore so i'm kind of done with this because it's now only five percent so it used to be you used oh, i remember the sign used to be able to get six for fiber yeah i remember yeah. when you could, when they were like less than a quid each it was yeah the golden exactly. days. and then uh, what also popularized it was captain fc at the time because their their uniforms were red and white um so and this um i guess yeah. package and for those of you that don't know captain fc is was well is was the anti-fascist football club there's now a separate anti-fascist football club called captain cfc which is just as awesome even and better. Even better, yeah. Because it's like, fan owned, you it's know. It's fan owned, so, yeah, yeah. exactly. But yes, so it's always been a kind of drunk by activists, anti fascists, and poor people, and that's why we drink it. Because yes. we are all of those things. Yes. But I, I will say I'm kind of I'm kinda of done with biscuit because it because it's uh, it's five percent now. I don't know, I still have like a nostalgia. I'm into orange boom, which sounds really terrible because it's that? like it's like eight point five percent, which oh, says about me mean. way more than I should. But it's the same price. It's eight point five percent, and get this: packaging is like matte red and black. Mm, that is not That is sex. So is um, it a Belgian beer? Uh, it's a Dutch. I believe it's oh. Dutch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 good. So and the, the often next to our station. The one across the road where I got the yes. mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, um, PSA, I'm really sorry if you see my knickers at some point, but this is a very short dress. I also haven't worn it since I was 15, and I'm not really used to worrying about my crotch. <laughs> you rock them, your legs are gorgeous. Yeah, I probably should have worn something other than my M&S briefs, but, you know. Hot. <laughs> hot, as, hot as fuck. Okay, so shall we move on to the next one? Yeah, so sorry, so that's it. I so mean, that yeah. is, I think, a very... Brief history we of do. Li yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm also a sucker for, like, you know, the craft ales and all of that stuff. Sure, love that stuff. But in terms of lagers, this this key is just the cheapest and best, or used to be, anyways. Mm. Alright, our next one is a longer one. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, yous do cool stuff. Your videos are great, and yous are lovely and thoughtful. Thank you. Never ask for dating advice, but hey, never too late to try something new. Basically, I feel like I hit a wall with my dating life. Last year, after moving to London, I went to on hundreds of dates through Tinder. Most went fine, some went well, and I hooked up with a bunch of girls for a few brief links. It was nice, but eventually I kind of wanted a longer or more meaningful relationship, but couldn't really find something that lasted. I suffer from borderline personality disorder. It's pretty serious and has affected a lot of my life, landing me in hospital numerous, numerous times. It's been a relatively recent revelation, but I worry it's a barrier to relationships. And after so many seemingly successful dates, but never involving into lasting relationships, I stopped using Tinder and figured out we'd meet another woman through my day-to-day -day life, which happened among my, my various Tinder days despite my shy gaydar. But nothing's happened. It's been months and haven't met anyone or gone on a date again. I still want a relationship, but I have to swear that my mental health is an obstacle I can't get over. I have nice times on dates, people are happy to invite me back to theirs, but just serious relationships aren't happening. Is it me? Is this enough information to assess my situation? Have I no clue how to end this? Have I the, no the question, clue I think. To... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Will I just keep talking forever, I think was the point. Yeah, no, but uh, I think you have provided us uh, with a lot of information. Uh, first of all, yeah, no, Tinder is like a wasteland, so I'm amazed that you kept on it for as long as you have. Like, I definitely, yeah, I've been quite open that I've been like on it these days, and uh, yeah, it's just full of it's either fuck boys or like dweeby boys, is how I say it, which is kind of bad. But it or me! me <laughs> but it sounds to me like this is a gay woman. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I guess I don't know what the. I mean, I've done. Hot, not queer enough. I've done no, that half like, of Tinder, and I, yeah, it's just as hard. Like, and the, like, yeah, the idea of real life trying to assess whether a woman is queer is 
fucking terrifying. So I wonder if perhaps a more, uh, you know, a more, est- uh, est- not established, no, a m- more commitment relating website like uh, okay, Cupid would be of more use here because it doesn't seem like you're just interested in hookups as such. You are after a relationship, and the thing is, is that in that well, on that, those websites, you can actually, if you wish, you can talk about your mental health. Many people do. Mm. Yeah, because you can actually, you have the space to write a, f- a complete profile and yeah. do the questions. My, uh, so on the borderline personality sort of thing, I completely understand that it's a really serious illness. Someone close to me also suffers from it. But plot twist, she is in a committed, loving relationship and is doing really well. So it can happen. And yes, she is in three different types of therapy and this and this and group stuff and individual stuff. And I hope that you're getting that kind of help if that's what's appropriate for you. Because you seem to suggest that the borderline personality disorder is what's getting in the way in of the, the way. dating but mm. you haven't said why or how you think that is like because it seems to me like there's two things one thing is that just the dates aren't turning into a relationship but the other thing is that you have bpd and you're worried about that affecting it and so i wonder whether that part of it is in your head or it is actually affecting the way you date yeah agreed uh, you also also to second this i know people with bpd absolutely in long loving long-term mm-hmm. relationships um but I think you're so spent here. You're exhausted. My God, did you move to London what, like a year and a half ago and you've gone to like yeah. dozens of dates? Yeah, last oh my year. days. Also, be a bit more picky, you know? I don't know, like don't just yeah. go on dates just because someone said to you that that's, that's that, that, that someone invited you on a date. Also, you're, the way that you frame this is like, oh, and people are like happy to invite me back to their places as such. But are, are you happy with that? Yeah, it doesn't sound like you're taking much control over your own dating yeah. destiny, if you like. Yeah. I, yeah, I understand, like, if a lot of people are, like, hitting on you, that's, like, really cool, and it's, like, it's a buzz, but that doesn't, I mean, hundreds of people are not going to have an emotional connection with me, that's just very unlikely. Yeah, and I think so, the, also the more, kind of, one dates, the less, the more desensitized it becomes I as think well. so as well. The more you expect a certain kind of routine from the date as well, yeah. like, okay, we'll chat, we'll go for dinner, we'll go back and hook up, I'll never see you again, and you decide that that's Literally, the routine. Literally, just, yeah, you, sit, you kind of get stuck in that cycle you know you don't necessarily and you always think someone's gonna fuck you over as such yeah. so you won't allow you won't allow them to fuck you over so you're gonna yeah. do it yourself or something like that well not even fuck you over you know what i mean like yeah you just develop this like the shield yeah and that definitely just yeah puts us in spaces where we lose trust and i also like i don't feel like like i have to say this but like you don't have to sleep with someone on like a first or second date if mm. if you're wanting to build something more like obviously a lot of great relationships can be built from like a shag like I've had them too but it like it's not a necessary first step and if you actually are making a connection with someone it's okay to take it a bit slower and to see that relationship build so you don't end up feeling like oh I just had another one night stand cool great like as a thing because yeah if you are serious about trying to find someone you you, you I mean most of the time I feel like I know within the first hour of a date whether it could go somewhere beyond a one night stand Really? Yeah. I so can't tell. I just fall for people. It's really sad. Yeah, I don't. And, and also, they I put spaghetti it. around my ears, right? Yeah. They go, I oh, want this and this and this. I'm like, sure, yes. Oh my god, yeah, of course. And it turns yeah. out that's not the case. I've been also on the other side of that as well. But like, I don't know. I so can't tell at all. Uh, I don't know. It's because I'm. It's because I'm very critical. And I don't fool people. So I'm always looking for signs as to why it wouldn't be a, a permanent oh thing. Oh my god, I'm like the other way around. So if I find it's like they so haven't, bad. they haven't like raised any like I don't know orange flags in the time we've been talking i'm like okay well like you can change people that's the thing yeah. i guess i guess because i because i'm into like changing people's minds and opinions and political beliefs as well that and also they're just ha- they usually happen to be stupidly hot so i'm just like i'll do anything for you yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing like you need to like kind of i think you need to pick your priorities yes. and chase them yes. down instead of like yeah waiting for something to happen to you or ending up in these situations that end because because they end. I'm not saying it's your fault. Like often we go into a Tinder or otherwise date hoping it's going to be something better, and it turns out that person just wants a one night stand. Also, the way that it sounded, uh, that's not to mean that your dates are not super hot or whatnot. The way that, like, I just that. Mine. I, I think, me now. No, yeah, the way that 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 sound is like, ooh, I fall for them because like, they're like happen to be super hot or whatever. That sounded as if yours are not. I'm I'm sure yours are oh, yeah, equally as. Sound, one night stand was <laughs> uh, but but no. But I'm, I guess I guess I have this like stereo- very stereotypical view, and in that sense, they tend to be. And I just like for me, that's enough a lot of the time. That's all. Mm. That's not to say that. You know, no. Yeah. So, but if yeah, I just think you're maybe making the connection between the BPD and the 
not being able to have a serious relationship that may or may not be true because I know it can absolutely affect people's interpersonal stuff and you need a lot of honesty and your partner needs to have a lot of patience with you which is a true thing but yeah I don't know I feel like you're trying to find reasons why this isn't happening and launching on that which isn't good for your mental health either if that makes sense sorry well, I guess it's like a bit of a I, I mean it's like one of the s- symptoms I suppose is to be in that like darker space you know yeah like paranoia like, yeah well yeah I guess just thinking like things won't go my way essentially mm. but you know that will pass again that's a lot of your you know the chemicals in your in your brain doing the wussa wussa and kind of pushing you towards this this feeling of, of helplessness yeah. but also not to say that London can be an incredibly lonely place uh, oh, yeah. though though like there's so many attractive people around and everything and but still, how do you talk to them it's so hard to talk to people and if you're part of a small scene like it's so weird yeah there's so many different there's so many different cl- cl- clusters of people and I don't even mean like in terms of friendship groups but like okay well are you clubbing in Old Street are you clubbing in like Peckham are you are you dating someone? I don't know. Are you? Are, it's, it's just too big a city for there to be a cohesive anywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. It can be really overwhelming, and I completely und- yeah. Also, queer clubs. You know, go. What about those? Maybe just trying out going to actually like, actually I'm gay ones. Like I I I'm a queer woman, and I've been in London now about what nine months, ten months. And I'm struggling to find like queer people. But I think on Facebook, surely with. you can find like I don't know queer part. Or, there's lots in Dalston and stuff like the that. The only so queer yeah, one I found that would, like keep talking about it is like a fetish club, which isn't really my thing. Like, but yeah, I mean, there are many like queer places that aren't either gay man gay or like very into like a certain kind of aesthetic. Sure. There isn't more like lefty maybe like alternative queer spaces yeah. here as there are in other cities, which are the real shame. Yeah. But yeah. Also, Facebook groups for meeting people as friends that you can then build a thing with. There are loads of really good ones that I've talked about in other videos that are great for meeting like-minded queers and just having a laugh because you're not going to have a relationship with someone unless you have a laugh and get to know them first. Like, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Just always, you know, just come to Clapton Games. Always. There's lo- lots of lovely people there. Also, there's a ladies' team now. Yeah, well, I, that's the thing. I was going to say that. I was like, does that mean there'll be more queer women? I mean, Does that sound bad? It's intriguing me, okay? Maybe that means that I'm like, no. oh, I don't know. But I don't like, know. What's wrong with wanting to see women run around in a pitch wearing shorts? Like, yeah, so we like to see men do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I literally, that's what I was like, uh, uh, then I didn't know how to finish that. But yeah, basically, there is now a like, Clapton women's team. Maybe more likely to find queer women then, but also don't just go just to like oh no, also just hook up and that not, sort of yeah. stuff. But it's a really fun community. We're we're there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Coming yes. out with us at Clapton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, we hope that was okay. Yeah. Again, let us know how you're doing. Also, on this note, just to say thank you so much for all the people that are like giving us kind of feedback and or telling us how things have went after yeah after our advice to them. That's been really fascinating. Yeah. People, People go like, yeah, I took this on, I tried this mm. on. This one didn't particularly work, but like that really did. And thank you so much. And all of that, like yeah. that's amazing to us. And I just want to say like regarding the mental health stuff, like we're not professionals in that area. Yes. And like if you're not already having professional help, definitely do that because it will change your life. And if you are, then like amazing. That's super cool that you're taking care of yourself like that. And big love. Yay. How, 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 are, how, are, we, how are we looking? How are we looking? Oh, you're looking good. How am I looking? You're looking gorgeous. You're not all the hair tucked into your boob. That no, was what, like, what? staring at earlier. <gasps> head hair, not like the head hair. Yeah. That's not like an issue. Okay. I was looking at it. Oh, I just got some bronzer on it as well. <laughs> got some bronzer on it. Oh, oh. oh, is this like the skirt is weird as well? It's like I feel like I've got blood falling out of it. I, yeah, but I feel that because of this as well. It's anything that cl- clenches makes you feel like you're exploding out like, of it. Again, kudos to Love Island girls. Mm. Like, they always on camera and that, and still manage to just look fucking like incredible at, from all angles at all times. Well, I guess they literally get cast, cast, casted, not casted, like they're castings for them. Like, they don't just apply as such, they're castings now to be on Love Island, right? Or they like. What do you mean by castings? Well, like, like, cam- like camera castings, and then how do they look? Like. Oh, like. What well, kind of like they was that different from audition? A casting. Oh yeah. Is know. casting is casting American? I don't know. But yeah, I guess auditions. But you see, I don't think they audition because they get talent picked at this point. Do they? They don't apply. There's one girl they're just from this they're year. Because they're hotties, basically. Because they're in- Instagram girls. Yeah. Oh, they're already famous. They're, they're not just. Well, they don't just fa- walk into a hairdresser's and think you're hot, go on Love Island. No, they're no. already influencers. Uh, well, well they, they will have like eight thousand followers, you know. So like, not not like not like influencers, mm. but like how they're called micro influencers. 
I love that you don't have an Instagram, but you know way more about Instagram politics than me. Well, it's kind of in my purview, right? Technology yeah, yeah, yeah. and politics, all of that stuff. Oh, definitely. So I'm interested in, in, in how new medias are affecting politics. Can I get a pop-up? Yeah. I don't know. You're usually responsible for the drinks. <laughs> I normally give you a tisky. I can pour you a drink, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> Mix me a cocktail, girl. Okay. It's very, very complex. Okay, so stage one is... That's a lot. Stage two. It's fine. It's only twenty percent. Yeah, I need to chill. With it anyway. <laughs> I'm so self-aware. Like the amount of bronzer I have on me, that's. Ridiculous. I feel like my tits are falling down as we speak. A little bit. Oh my god, boob tubes. You know? Oh my god, funny thing. You know, Americans um, don't know the word boob tube. What is a boob tube? Oh, a boob tube is like is like it's like a this kind of thing, like a top. Ah, okay, you're, I, I guess you're foreign. That's fine. Bra. But like, it's just a real common word in English slang, and I was in this American group, and they got really hysterical about the word boob tube because they thought it was a porn channel. Oh, but like specialising on boobies. Yeah, I don't know. They were like, "Oh my god, what, what boob tube? What?" And I was That's like, "Fascinating." Oh, sweet summer child. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's their word for it. Tube top. Top. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I, that's what the one I know. Yeah. I just, um... <laughs> um, Wait, my, are my eyes not glued to my? Your eyes are not glued, nor are mine. I'm guessing they just oh, feel like they just feel like. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, this is a longy. Oh, Wait, no, that's the feedback one, so we okay, don't need yeah, that. No, 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 yeah. That was just some feedback, and thank you for thank it. You. Okay, this is. Oh, okay. Hi, girls. I saw you guys on BreadTube recently. Really enjoyed your videos. My question is, how would you deal with losing someone who was not only your first and only serious relationship, but best friend? We had known each other since we were in elementary school and were together through most of high school. We didn't break up for a reason that was because we had a bad fight or didn't love each other anymore, but because there was an accidental pregnancy in high school and she had to get an abortion. The relationship was understandably very hard for her and it wasn't the same after that. I'm also more introverted, so losing not only my one major girlfriend, but my actual best friend was very hard and these things lead me to have a commi commitment issues. So I make both my friends and my love interests feel bad when I have real problems committing to them on top of being more introverted. It's so difficult not to be cynical about this. What, about the fact of how young we are? Yes, I'm so sorry. I just, I don't know. I, 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 and again, we're talking about, you know, we're saying of, you know, kind of... Yeah, like, I think it would be a shittier show if we just kind of, like, I don't know, help, just totally held your hand. What I want to say is that gonna get over this <laughs> I don't know like I the person that I am right now is very very different from the person that I was growing up elementary school come on like you are not if you are the same person as you were as a teenager in your late 20s I'm saying like there's something wrong with this you, is the like. problem it doesn't say how old they are now yeah. and for how much time has passed because like if you're 19 and you're still hurting then you will get over it and I'm real sorry you're hurting but it yeah. will matter yeah if you're in your 20s and you still haven't got over your first love that's that is borderline like slightly obsessive behavior which is really unhealthy yeah do you watch our videos on how to deal with rejection not that you've been rejected but basically we do give some some good tips about um you know how to forget someone and such mm. so we're not necessarily believers and just completely deleting them out of your life it's just like you know they will change too like the idea you shouldn't be holding the idea that they have what they've been yeah. for them to yeah. Fit that as such. And also, it's it's weird for me that you say that because of this breakup that broke that happened for like quite an understandable reason. Like you now have commitment issues. For me, those two things don't seem to scan. Yeah. It sounds like you're making an excuse for your commitment issues. Yes. Like it broke up because of a pregnancy, and therefore she or you felt uncomfortable afterwards, not yeah. because of a commitment related issue. But commitment issues isn't that just a cold, cold, cold word for like I am still not over that girl, hence I'm not gonna commit. In like, which case, I wouldn't date, or else. I would have a few rebounds. But yeah. that, oh, you're not lying to someone and saying our oh, our oh, long-term things. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know though. Commitment issues to me is like not a thing. I just yeah, think I it's like un it. I don't believe in it in general. Yeah. Like, I think it's like until you beat the right person, and then like you just probably are a dick to people. Yeah, you lead them on. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a whole th episode about like how not lead someone on and why you shouldn't lead people on. But we oh, did which last. One was that? We did it last time. Um, the person who was like, "I need help because I'm always leading girls on," and we were like, "Yeah, don't do that." Oh wait, wasn't this the one in the pool? Maybe that was one in the pool. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the one Jordan Peterson and bisexuality. 
Was that one? I don't know, but we had one when we were in the pool, which is about how not to leave, some, well, why you shouldn't leave someone on. So watch that as well yeah. as our rejection one. There's not the, really much specific advice we can give you on this because you haven't given us much more information apart from that this thing happened a few years ago, it sounds like, and you're still not over it. And we, yeah. Yeah, I guess the only thing from my personal experience, again, as I can say is that people change, especially that period after high school, like university years. That's when all of us just completely, I think, transform our personalities. And if you're not going to be the first one to do it, then she will, you know, and then you're going to not recognize her and probably even begin to hate her because of this idea of who she was, you know. Yeah, don't That's put her really on a pedestal. Unfair. No, no, don't put her on a pedestal, but also when she does decide to develop into a different human being, as most of us do, like, don't don't make her feel like, I don't know, she's ruined yeah. whatever you've had or something like that. I mean, I do understand the sympathy of, like, breaking up with someone and then having lost your best friend because it, in a good relationship, your partner is one of your best friends. Of course they yeah. are. Yes. And I definitely had that when I broke up with my boyfriend of three years and I felt like, shit, I've also lost my best friend and it was... That's such sucked. a good point, right? Like, surely those two should come to go yeah. together all the time. All the time, yeah. So, like, I completely understand that feeling of, like, it's real hard to break up with someone because you have lost someone very important in your life, but hopefully you'll have other people around you, friends and such, and you have to make it sounds like you have to make more of an effort to try and like people and not see them as like shit versions of her yes yes exactly and yeah like she's it sounds like she's moved on and yeah it's hard and it takes a long time and like some cases you're never forever over someone and you still think oh what if but you have to make like a conscious effort now. yeah yeah and kind of i don't know again you can gamify that stuff you know give yourself rewards for like amount of time you haven't thought about her and then and or like really, I don't know, yeah, put yourself out there, but like with loving someone or like liking someone for who they are rather than them being diff- like mm. as close as possible to that person or whatnot. And if you don't feel like you're able to do that, don't make commitments that you can't follow through on. Mm. And just maybe be single for a while and try and make some friends in a platonic way. Yeah, yeah. don't be a fuck boy. Don't be a fuck boy. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, thanks. Well, I'm not, not sorry, I mean, I don't know. There's I can't, a, like, yeah, there's not really much we can say. You're very young and you're hung up on a person, but we have... The way that I've read this a little bit is that, like, it was more therapy for you to write this than the sort of response you expect from us. Yeah, is that actually... Well, uh, the question is, how do you deal with losing someone who was not only your first and only serious relationship with oh, best friend? that's a dumb question, like. No, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm no, not... we have like, come on, empathy. Sure. No. Yes. Yes. Of course. Of course. But like, how are you meant? To, how are you meant? Like, it's it's a sign of a bad relationship if you're not best friends with your partner. Is all I'm saying. And how do you deal? Yeah. And how do you deal with losing them? Like, it fucking sucks. Yeah. Like, it will rip the heart out of you. You're you're gonna be in so much pain for so long. We've all been there. And yet, what annoys me is that, yeah, you're sort of projecting that onto, like, the next relationship. And I just don't like that. Again, I'm projecting because I've been, like, also utilized in that way. And it just sucks. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean it the way that I was just like, that's a dumb question. But it's just, again, as I say, I think it was, I congratulate you that you've written this. Mm. Yeah, I think there's more in there. you writing this than there is in us answering this. Yeah, maybe diary. Yeah, I love that shit. That's all I do, actually. Mm-hmm. I still don't know what to do with my hair. Believe it or not, I kind of try to curl it, but it's just not. not I guess it's wavy. Yeah, wavy's good. Okay. Yeah, wavy's love island. I think it looks cute. Thank you. Uh, okay. Hello, I'm a 90 year old straight cis head male guy studying. Well, male guy. It actually just says male. I put the guy down. Studying politics at uni in Canada. I started identifying as an anarchist this year after one of my housemates who is an anarchist radicalized me, kinda, and helped me see that the beliefs I have are in line with anarchism, whatever that does, doesn't really matter, I read some books and shit. The question <laughs> isn't really a serious one, but do you have any stories of problematic hookups? Wait, this doesn't mean people you hooked up with and then realize and held super fucked up views, beliefs that um, political, social, or etc. I've definitely had some experiences of going back to a girl's apartment and like seeing an Ayn Rand book or some some other bullshit like a Margaret Thatcher poster. It made me lose my shit when I saw that one. Big fan of the show. I really enjoy it a lot. That's a cool question. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> I just want to say something. You have a bit of lipstick in your teeth. Mm, thank you so much. You see, that's that's good sisterly behavior. Saying that, if you could just like point me to the two front arms to do that. That's all. I mean, you probably can't see it on the camera. Suck it out. Yep, go on. Fabulous. You see, that, that's, that's how... By the way, if you are a friend to someone, 
when you don't do this, sort of tell them, you know, if there's something's a bit off, you then you're to. a bad fucking friend. Yeah. And I've been, I've been calling out not only my girlfriends but boyfriends as well, like yeah. dude friends or whatever, being like, how the fuck you haven't told you that my eyeliner is literally like it's here? It's such a pain. What like fuck? maybe it makes me feel a little bit awkward or them a little bit like self-conscious for one second. But say they go to a, a toilet two hours later and realize they had a massive bogey, totally. they would rather know. Uh huh. Like, and there's a really nice way of doing this, like Rowan just demonstrated just then. Come on, guys yeah. and gals, all of you. Yeah, step up. Seriously. Right. Yeah. So, problematic hookups. Oh, dear. Um, Boy. Do you want to start? So, uh, this is a really interesting discourse that I think was kind of begun about two years ago, but actually my pal, uh, who I've lived with, that you've met a couple of times as well, I think she tweeted something about, like, never kissing a Tory, mm. and it kind of blew up. Um, and I, <laughs> that, yeah, as, as, as she was like, you know, as a progressive, I wouldn't do that something that I don't have personally don't have any issues with as in, as in like I, I, I you don't I, always know as well so this is so tricky again this is where your and my opinions really differ I think I have I get enough satisfaction out of hooking up with someone that I'm like very physically attracted to and if they're like if they have good moves that I don't really have any problem necessarily with them having that bad of politics because what I needed to get a got and yes that happened it happened to me mostly <laughs> it seems to me like I, I, I tend to have a thing for Israeli boys and 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 sadly even the youth that sadly is still very um, let's say not pro-Palestine mm. as such it's something that I don't necessarily find out until later on so this is not just like it sounded a bit bad as in like oh that's just like you know, a hookup despite of this you know this is conversation that usually gets ha- like happens later on as such but what are you meant to do afterwards like, you can't take it back yeah you can't take it back but also like i actually think if this is a really interesting discussion we've kind of had it before but i want to do it for the benefit of the camera mm-hmm. is that like what you're doing in my opinion is a more advanced version of feminism than what i'm doing because what I'm doing no. is, I think a lot. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, I have a whole spiel. It's no, I'm so sorry. I'm coming so sorry. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so what I'm doing is thinking I won't sleep with this person who's a Tory because I don't want to give them the satisfaction of having slept with me. Whereas what you're doing is actually putting your own like sexual satisfaction first. Whereas I'm actually denying myself sexual satisfaction in order to deny them, which is more like a cutting off my nose to spite my face situation, than actually taking what is mine and leaving them in the dirt. Don't do that if it's a nice person, if it's a Tory, leave them in the fucking dirt. And so, like, I think about this a lot, like, and how I, I'm like, no, I couldn't sleep with a Tory, but actually, I'm like, yeah, if I wanna, if I wanna, like, have that kind of sex, why shouldn't I take it? I appreciate that. Actually. However, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm so sorry that, yeah, that wasn't, on, but um. I think we, again, as you say, me and you had this conversation, and I think what you said in those conversations that you didn't say just then is actually the key sentence that will actually prove that no, your feminists or that politics are actually more advanced, <laughs> is because you say, I wouldn't give them the privilege to have touched me. I would not allow them to then go back to their friends and tell me that I hooked up with them. Yeah, that's cool. what upsets me the most. It's not like, like they're them like, coming, it's the them getting like the bro points and honestly i don't have a good answer to that and i think you're fucking you're probably right i don't know but okay so my my way of like i guess defending myself which is also not at all the correct opinion and it's reactionary as fuck is that i think it's already been well documented in through this show as such that i i have fairly stereotypical desires when it comes to like when it comes to the the the, op, the 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 someone I'm gonna ho- be hooking you mean up aesthetic with aesthetic or aesthetic. Aesthetic. Okay. aesthetic well and sex no I mean like I just want to be satisfied right mm. so like um and well, sadly for me but probably absolutely understandable because it's a lot of faff to keep that up is that in the radical left there's just not enough yeah, of that, that aesthetic so, does not exist exactly so obviously the ideal would be to have that aesthetic and I have like a fucking anarcho babe. Sadly, that's not often what tends to happen. And yet, though, we have to be real with ourselves and with our viewers. Like, anarcho boys are, can be just as shitty and broy and like, oh, if we got laid, as right wingers, as Tories, like, and also shitty and bad. And shitty and bad. Like, women can be treated by shitly by people all over the spectrum. Yeah. So actually, yeah, that's the thing. It's like I've had encounters where it's like 
But and that's the thing, like, but yeah, I mean, it probably is fucked up. Like, someone, yeah, is like anti Palestine. Fucking incredible in that, right? So, what do I do? What that probably makes me like fucking, I don't know, that probably makes me like racist in some sort of way if I'm allowing them to do that. I don't know. That's just such a tricky conversation. And I know someone's probably gonna have really like correct opinions under like somewhere there in the comments. I kind of want to hear it. I am interested, as in like, I mean, again, I find that I find that out later. And I guess the question would be like, would I go back? Well, I haven't, but would I? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess in terms of my story, the only person I can think of that fits this um, is when I just moved back to London, I was in a not great place, and I decided what I really want tonight is a hookup. And I went for drinks with this guy, and during the conversation, like it was a Tinder guy, I was like, right, meet you in an hour, done. During the course of the conversation, it turned out that he's a property developer. And I'm, um, in my other time, I'm a housing activist and anti-homelessness activist and obviously ex-squatter and we're not huge fans of um, property <laughs> developers, you might say. And I, I learned this before we had sex, but you know what? We had some bands, I told him that I was anti-gentrification and anti-everything he stood for and he's explained his position, which was that he was earning money to send back to his mother in Nigeria mm. and it was, a you know, like he had his position, I had my position. Then you hate fuck. Then we had fucking amazing sex. So like, you know, like, yeah, I could have been like, um, I'm sorry because of your views. I'm not going to like let but, you bang me. Like, please, I wanted to do that. So, but I, so I wondered though, that's probably still not, 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 maybe not yours because like, doesn't necessarily kill people. Well, maybe it does. I don't know. Oh, it definitely does. I mean, the housing industry kills people every year. Well, yeah, probably, probably there are better people. Than, out, than us then, out there, that, like you, the person that sent it the question, that just sees that stuff and goes like, no. Did he? Did he say that? Did well, he actually got... sleep with her or not? Oh, yeah. Doesn't say. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, no judgment from us if you did end up sleeping with her, to be honest. And Though, again, having sex with a Margaret Thatcher poster in the room, not a turn on. No, <laughs> No, I guess a bit more so. But um, again, I'm a big believer in changing people's minds and changing people's political opinions. I know I've done that in the past. I've done that with partners as well. Mm, so like, I don't think that's necessary. Like, basically, you can find them as that. And we're talking about hookups, right? But like, what if you do end up in relationships and then, you know, in five years time, it will be Emma Goldman's poster or something yeah. like that, you know? So yeah, everyone has a capacity to change. Yeah. As long as you don't, through that five years, end up being a right winger. <laughs> Well, yeah. It does also happen to people on the left. Well, you know how many people would be disgusted by us right now? I bet. What, for sleeping with right wingers? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Sleeping with the enemy. Yeah. Whatever, man. The enemy knows how to bang. Yeah, man. And the left. <laughs> and, like, and the left are like little fuck boys too who treat women like shit, but they just do it through this whole kind of like intellectual superiority. 100%. Instead. And also, they will have like the Emma Goldman posters and like the Syrian, yeah. the Syrian, you know, oh, the, yeah, yeah. the Kurdish like, stan like, like, ladies with the guns and all of guns. that stuff. Yeah, 100%. So, you like a lot of the time, they will have still very embedded like racist, misogynist, and yes. transphobic views, you know? So, kind of can't tell anymore no. and like i will take a good fuck when i find one like yeah which just sounds terrible no, but like an anarchist who's shit towards women to me is less cool and actually less politically awesome than a right winger who's good to women no I but don't know. so but okay that's where intersectionality comes in right because right. okay like women sure but you know what about race you know yeah. so no i know it's true but so therefore, therefore, sounding here like two white girls for sure. We're no, very absolutely, aware of that. we're so aware of that. But I just don't, I just don't know, like, because feminism is an important part of it, and treating someone in good in bed is a form of feminism. And if you're not doing that, then you're just like an anarchist asshole, and don't deserve to sleep with women either, to be honest. So, yeah. I feel like this is what you think. Here's like a lighthearted question about what do you do if someone's got, and we're just going into like. But I think a lot yeah. of people find this relatable. Yeah. And yeah, like you say, you probably have better analysis than us, probably also because they're typing it. And, you know, I'm much smarter sounding when That's I type true. out yeah, yeah. than I am. You know, we're just ad-libbing here. Like. Yeah, you know, and these are the sort of conversations we're having in, like, mm. pubs with our pals all the time, you know? So, and yeah, people, are, usually it's more jokey, right? Because people are like, yeah, nah, I would never do it. I'd be like, yeah, I'd do it, you know? So mm. we don't mean necessarily go in that depth. But, um, but I think it's interesting. Again, again the ambition is for for this sort of division not to exist, right? And so I would like to think that in our time outside of the states as such, we do a lot of work to yeah. bring the 
you know, egalitarian society as such and then internationally. I know we both do. And we put so much unpaid labor towards that. So that to be prosecuted in that particular mm. point is just like I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. I mean that's literally what we're doing this show. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. We're trying to wake, you know, right wingers and other people less so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think yeah, literally like I fuck it, it's my like some sort of weird reparation or whatever it is, like I do do like so much fucking unpaid labor I have been like in Rowan as well for like fucking a decade now or whatever, more than that. And like yeah, if I wanna have like good sex with a hottie But then again I say this now, but then you hear they're like Yeah I wouldn't (laughs) And I wouldn't like shag like a Tommy supporter. No, because they're ugly. (laughs) Or like, you know, someone who's explicitly racist. But then obviously again being like anti Palestine I guess is is racism. I guess okay, I'll tell you what well yeah. Yeah, right. no, it is. But then again, it's extremely like embedded as such. Yeah. I mean, not that that's an excuse at all. Because like, what if yeah. yeah, what if like white supremacy is embedded? In right, you, right. That that's not okay. No. Yeah, it's really complicated what your what your line is, and it definitely comes from your own privileges and your own your own. I don't know. Yeah. I guess opinion. Yeah, for but sure. that doesn't mean it's right. Like no. the way I justify it to myself doesn't mean that's right. For no. Sure. no, no, no. Mm. But okay. On the other, other, other hand, do we what? Just create that complete division, you know? Like, and so we don't. Yeah. We don't Part of the job is educating the right, and we can do that through them, like having feelings for us, and then trying to better themselves for us. That is like actually a thing. If you have the NG, we could yeah. do, which we do well, do. Yes, which we do do. <laughs> yeah, but it is like I guess it is a, a tool or a weapon that we have, and we should be utilizing it accordingly. I'll tell you what, I guess because I've been lucky enough to be with people, even though they're right wingers, that seem to be wishing to please the lady, that in me there is this hope that they're open open to renegotiation of their beliefs, you know? If they wouldn't be that way, if they really would just be like, te- like terrible in, in, in intimate circumstances, I think I just wouldn't, like I would leave because I would be like, there's literally no hope yeah. here. But it's because, uh, oh fuck. But again, which is such a basic minimum, right? Mm. Oh fuck, he made me come. Like that's such a yeah. basic thing. That should be like, of course, I made him come like three times. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. It's so hard. So it's such bullshit, you know. As in, like, oh my god, made me come. Oh my god, I'm gonna change his opinion. Oh, great. If I want to, anyways. But yeah. like, that's such a basic thing to have happen. Yeah. 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 And I was like, you know, it comes down to the original like NHS concept, right? Do we? Like, do we bang people into being left-wing? We have. We have. You know what? I'm really interested in people's opinions on this. Definitely comment below, you know? Like, again, we... I will be surprised if, if, if... Many of you will arrive to a very, very clear position on this. That will not be... You know very kind of completely the the device of that section yeah it's very easily hard line i would never shag a tory whatever like done but yeah i like to think that too i I say that i throw that around whatever but like reality is more complex than that yeah but maybe that is again my privilege talking i don't know like oh yeah yeah left left is well yeah 100 percent. it is by the way it is our privilege talking 100 percent. i know that like for facts um not that that makes it better but anyway, it's like oh no, we're aware of it, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. That's so easy to do, and we're very much aware that it's easy yeah. to do. <laughs> see how this goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are so many lefties that turn right wing as well, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, if they're the ultimate like lefty dude who's great to women in bed and in general and hot and all of the things, then yeah, I'd rather shout. But him. there is a lack of them, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? And hopefully you people watching will become those men. Yes, exactly. And then us poor ladies will no longer have to shag right wingers. Thank you. <laughs> Precisely. So it's all on you guys. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I love how we turn this to yeah, be, you know, yeah. other people's problems. Yeah. <laughs> but in general, I try to avoid sleeping with the right. And in general, I have succeeded. That was my one discretion. Sure, sure. I've, I may have had, had bad more than more than one, but. Um, also, I don't know every element of people's politics. You know, I haven't asked everyone what their stance is on Palestine, right? Yeah. So. Also, like, whatever. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Anti-Palestinian, but like so radical in so many d- different ways, and it's just like, yeah, it's it's. Uh, that was that is not a sexy sound. <laughs>
Okay. We did that, that looks one. good as well. Okay. 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 Hi. How are we looking oh. in terms of sorry? I'm looking in terms oh, of the. Uh, one, two, three. I don't know. Three on this page. But you you cut some out, yeah. We cut some out. Um, are we gonna explain why we cut them as we come to them? I guess. Okay. Sorry, I just made sure it's not Sorry, sorry, no, I, I... Um... Yeah. Okay. Hi! I'm 21 guy. God, this is such a Reddit way of talking, it's so weird. Like, 21 M. It's, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it, yeah. But this isn't the Reddity one, this is a different one. But I'm just saying in general that way of introducing yes. yourself is very Reddity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a 21 year old guy. Full sentences, please. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, and trying to get into dating. Something that came up a lot of times when I'm trying to chat up a girl is my height. I'm five foot five foot two, which is really short for a guy in Australia. Women will mention my height in conversation. You're really short, or you look like you're 14. Recently, a girl I thought I was getting on well with at a house party just randomly said, your height is making me feel so insecure. She was in heels, so quite taller than me. It was weird, but also embarrassing because other people at the party heard her and giggled. Shit like this has made me a little conscious in social interaction, from dancing in a club with taller girls to taking photos with them. How do I get women to look past my height? P.S. My girl mates reckon I should try Tinder, but I've seen a bunch of stuff online about Tinder being shit for short men slash POC. Do you know if this is true? I don't know where this comes from, but apparently it's a big, huge thing. Okay, so yeah, I know a, a bit about this. Um, Basically, there is a Tinder norm where people put their height in the comments, and like it's a kind of certain group or basically shit people, shit people who like make jokes about that and talk about that stuff. But I'm assuming you don't want to date one of those shit people. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Like what the fuck? And honestly, if you have your height on your profile, which I wouldn't necessarily do, they people wouldn't swipe right on you anyway because they're shit shallow fucks. So like, honestly, fuck them. Like it's a weird Tinder thing. It's also okay. I might add. It is a thing that has, this is actually a bit of a personal beef for mine. Some girls do this, yes, and they judge people on a Tinder thing. But this has been really, really talked about in like, all right, like, men going away communities, as in, oh, we can't tell women off for this, this or this, but they make fun of us for their height, and they're using height now as a thing that, because some women have like made jokes about height, that now like, there is like, men are just as victimized as women in terms of looks, and in terms of treatment, and in terms of, shallowness and shitness and being forced to look and act a certain way no doubt those are traits that like men feel pressure to conform to as well but it has been over emphasized by like right-wing incel communities as this massive thing that it isn't so i would bear that cautionary tale in mind when you think that this is a massive phenomenon because it's more like a few vocalized people that have been amplified by a right-wing movement that is just wants to like circle jerk about its own misery god i've got feelings about this so uh I'm kind of on both sides of this in the sense of like, I actually, I'll tell you, um, I ha actually do have my height on my Tinder profile. Reason being, because I'm 5'1". I'm like, even actually barely 5'1". Um, but it's because I'm so short and actually been bullied throughout my life over that, whatever. Um, I'm so short that I see it as like a... Fetish. Yeah, almost. Like, that is a bit strong of a word, but like I can see how someone be like, "Oh my God, she's so tiny." That's kind of that's mm. kind of hot, right? So I do have my height in that, which is probably perpetuating that some sort of like height is important thing. But then again, it's on the lady side of things, and also I'm owning it because precisely because I've had issues over it for like a long time. So I'm kind of just owning it and being like, "Yes, I am small," and like fucking, like whatever you, I don't give a shit. However, quite recently actually someone was like literally i'm not even joking uh was i, pre I would prefer if you're part of two but i guess i can deal with it like, yeah yeah and what's even the difference i like don't know inch. i don't know and so i replied being like i prefer you had i don't what was that i think i, I was like i preferred you had bigger lips fuller hair and also better banter so bye and so and then i just un unmatched him you know but like it was wild. And I, I just feel like this is the kind of And stuff that's that, again, as I'm saying, people do actually like pick at me for being too short. And like, I feel like this stuff flies on an online dating scenario that wouldn't in a like real life scenario. This like obsession with these things that like, because you see someone straight away in a club or whatever, you can see their height or whatever. So you, you just wouldn't speak to someone that way in an impersonal, impersonal environment. Yeah, that is it's like, uh, that definitely it's, it's, a, it's a, an effect or like a, a reaction. Oh, no, it's, a, it's a consequence yeah. of, 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 of this weird 
language that we have in dating. I was listening to this podcast today, and they were saying how like um, I'm gonna go a bit a bit of a long way around this, but you will see how I arrived there eventually. So it was a podcast basically about how we interact with uh, pictures of ourselves and through different times so some scientists in the 1960s went to Papua New Guinea and uh, photographed the, the people there with like po Polaroid and they would show them image of them for the first time and it would be the first time ever that they would see an image of themselves right and which is a whole ethical issues behind this no but surely 100%. they've like seen their reflection in water and stuff it's not like the first time they've ever seen themselves sure but not like that but basically even that having that reflection yeah. so what they've done well a few of them would do is that they would put a picture above their heads and there's like crowns and so people would like see each other as that right and or or, and, or then uh, whenever more crews would come to film them they already had their acts or kind of act as such one would be the one that is doing like that with the with the stick or with the tools oh, and basically be so they, they'd be posing but without being asked to mm. and so they were just making analogies like but isn't that how we use social media right now so for instance instagram is so curated there are maybe five different maximum poses mm. as to how people are on instagram yeah. and there are maybe five different things so like food travel i don't know that we are actually posting on those travel, there's not yeah. that much like random stuff on it right it's just it's very curated things so we created this entire language around images and or around conceptions about what different social media means it's kind of a similar thing with tinder as in like we decided what are the parameters and i looked through a lot of these profiles they're all the same because they've, uh, they've and mine is probably similar to everyone else's it's just like there's a certain language that is being utilized and this is different particular criteria but no one's ever asked for it it's just that yeah yeah it becomes the norm of that platform yeah yeah and so people that are outside of that i personally find way more interesting mm. um you might as well i know if, if so yeah uh again if you, you would be surprised just how short a lot of like celebrities that you admire and find hot are like you know so so kim kardashian i think is hot too something like that you know so and Tom Cruise is my I mean, mind. we're not gonna lie that like it is harder for dudes to are short because there is a societal norm of tall means strong means protector means this 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 that does not that is it will make it harder it is not the be all and end all and we can talk a lot about how we should be changing the society things and stuff but it is it is a, a thing sure it, it, like, uh, and you've encountered it for so. me it wouldn't be because I'm shorter but like for me it wouldn't be either I mean my last boyfriend was shorter than me like see that's the thing I think it's made up to be more than it actually I think is so, too. so for instance there are like definitely the how to say this there are certain <sighs> aesthetical signifiers that are more kind of utilized for comparing different people in the mainstream. But I just don't know if this is one of them. It's, well, I guess I don't know. I would just say don't date those girls. Like, yeah. Like, not everyone cares about that kind of shit. Not everyone is tall. Not everyone is sh shallow in that way. Not every. Like, yeah, it just sounds like kind of like you're surrounded by kind of shitty people, to be honest. Like, yeah. I cannot really think of. But then again, if someone was already like telling them off over it, like people have done that to me, and I know it's easier because I'm a girl and all of that stuff, for sure. But you know, I don't know. There are certain masculine traits about me, like, I don't know, hairiness or whatever, like, that that I had to get rid of, and... Hmm. Oh, I guess you can't, because, I mean, again, there are heels, I don't think there's an issue with wearing heels. Yeah, but you can also, like, honestly, if you dress super sharp, and you're exactly. super kind and funny yeah. and charming and nice and listen, like, those things are way more important to me yeah. than, like, whether I'm taller than my partner. That's not even something I really think about. No, like, you just, like, you distinguish yourself in some other way. I don't yeah. know, maybe how, I don't know, this is me talking really stereotypically. That, or, like, tattoos or something. I mean, don't necessarily just now go and run and get, like, 90 tattoos, but, like, you know what I mean? There can be different signifiers yeah. about you. Yeah, hotness is not, to me, it's not right. Like, no. when, I, when I list my traits that I find most sexy, that well, I have a very particular relationship with height, for sure, because it's something I've been thinking about my yeah. whole life, because I'm just fucking short, and always have been, and, like, everyone goes, hey, you're so fucking small, I'm like, oh, I didn't know you're so small in real life, well, I, I don't know, I just, it's been in my life the whole time, and obviously it's easier as a, as a girl, but yet, like, yeah, I wish I was, like, like, two inches, three inches, no, more, like, I don't know, mm. fucking, a foot taller, I, I wish, 
And it's funny because like normally I don't really think about my height because I'm the normal height, if you like. And yet when I'm with Mariam, I sometimes feel like massive because when we take photos of each other, I look like this giantess next to, next to normally sized Mariam. No, it's that, the opposite. You're that's how I feel. Yeah, because well. and so it's like it's interesting that it's all it's all relational basically. Yeah. But get out of those fucking circles. Yeah. So, oh my god, like Jesus. Yeah, we definitely we again the the, the lefty circles that we're in, people that are charming and lovely and sexy in all the other ways and happen to be in incredibly strong and loving relationships. Yeah. But I'm just so angry. Like, who are, who are these women? And as I told you, literally, a guy was literally like, if you were 5'2, I would be into this. I prefer 5'2. <laughs> yeah, that happened to me. Literally, although I'm a girl, I don't, that's the yeah. like, smallest. It's weird. Maybe do put your height on Tinder because at least yeah. it's a good way of rooting out the assholes, to be honest. Yeah. 100% and you know, like, you know, 5 2, but we'll make you come like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, be good in bed. Yeah, that's it. Like, Honestly. Listen, be kind, it's dress so, well. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah, get a good rap. But it's annoying again because, like, right, like the tall boys wouldn't have to do that. No, right? of course not, yeah. You have to work harder if you're outside the societal norm. Yeah, and that's just like that's just through and through though. That's just universal. And again, we can continue and talk about why that's the case. And for sure, we're trying to destroy that in our ways. Not we're not doing that very well today because we're watching like wearing stereotypically. Yeah, we're dressed as love. Like yeah, but like you'll see us next episode. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, like that. I'm so angry, basically. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of bullshit. But also, so maybe writing, my last point would be maybe come up with like yeah. some kind of like if you get these kind of comments a lot, try and come up with some, some comebacks. Like Mariam's comeback to her that guy saying, "Oh, it'd be better if you're this." Like, "Oh, it'd be better if you're that." If that girl's like, "Oh, I would like you, but I'm wearing heels," be like, "I would you, I would like you, but I'm not a." Yeah. Ooh, am I getting my earring? <laughs> but I'm not a. I don't know. Or be like, like "Well, you're a fucking shit. giraffe." Like, yeah. I mean. Just I wish you were fucking shorter. What can I say? Like, <laughs> I like my girls to fit in the palm of my hand. Yeah, I mean, just gonna come up with some funny like comebacks, maybe that you can whip out when these things happen that will turn the room on your side. Because yeah. honestly, someone pointing out someone else's height, they're the dick, and everyone's right. laughing out of nervousness or whatever. But if yes. you find a way of cooling out the fact that they're the dick, they'll feel super ashamed of themselves being a shitty little asshole. Yes, thank you. Ooh, should we whip out? What yeah. would we know? Oh my days. I oh, actually still there. This is such a weird look, man. I just can't get over it. I just find it weird. I've like, put like eyeshadow everywhere. I just shine it. It's so odd. So odd. I'm mm. dead. Do I have flu for my Just like black bits. Isn't it just hair? No. Oh. No, it's like from clothes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's Should quite I? a cute one. Yeah, let me just that one. It's the weirdly phrased one, but it's a nice question. Question for Triple Eight. A hypothet. Yeah. Okay. Hypothetical scenario: disparity between parties in value placed on sex slash sexual activity due to preference, not because one loves the other less, etc. Assume relationship is otherwise healthy. How to navigate from here? Hypothetical scenario: given because whilst anonymous is in the dating scene. He is not currently in relationship insecurities based on past relationships. Yes, Anonymous is generally the less aroused one, not by choice, not because I haven't explored enough. I have, I think. 20 year olds, male, male bisexual. Postscriptum, I only found your show today and already watched all of it. Holy shit. There's no way. That's like 10 hours, no? Yeah, maybe just the one episode. Maybe. Please, please keep at it. I have already learned so much. I'm desperate to learn more. Thank you so much. These words mean everything, yeah. so thank you. Oh, I don't know, like that just that's yeah. what keeps us going. So incredibly, thank you so much. Uh, mm. uh, been there, still there. I mean, I can start if you like, please. I generally have a lower sex drive than my partners, as a thing. Like it's pretty much consistent with all my partners. Mm, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> It's, yeah, like, it's fine and you will find people that are okay with that because 
sex isn't everything it, to some people. Some people it is, and that means you're in, incompatible with those people if it's the most important thing to them. Yes. You might want to explore what your love language is. I know that sounds really hokey, but it's actually very interesting. But so I wonder, okay, and this is the terrible question to ask you. Feel free not to respond to it. Is there anything... Oh my god. Hit me. Is there anything that your partners could have done to make to fucking change it? That's so dark. Because I've been on both sides and I'm thinking mm. about it like... I don't think so. I actually don't. Like... I think the problem with me... The problem with me is that I find it very, very interesting, exciting getting to know someone and seeing their like come face and all of that stuff. And once I know that, I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> the sex in and of itself is like a fine thing to do, but honestly, I'd rather like cuddle and watch a movie. I'd rather like. I'm just really lazy, I think. Like, I don't mind having sex, I'll do it. But like, once it's not that process of exploration, it's more something I do because my partner wants to and I don't really mind. Got neighbors. Yeah, so I think it's yeah, it's like I will have sex with my partners because they are like I honestly like six months ago I was googling whether or not I'm asexual. Like that was the thing I was doing. And I don't think I am. Because, but then I also read a lot of stuff on like, um, like sexuality forums and stuff about how a lot of asexual people do in fact have sex to please their partners, but they just don't really get anything out of it. But I do get something out of it, I actually enjoy it when I'm doing it, but it's just it's not a priority for me in my relationships, unless it's that initial exploration stage, and yeah, I don't know, like, so I kind of feel you, and I also think it's fine, and I think you will find partners who are compassionate and understanding of that. I also will not say though, because I don't know if this is true, I'm still young, I still haven't dated that many people, that that is the case forever. I don't know whether it's people I'm dating or whether it's me. I don't know that. But I do know that it's been consistent in pretty much all my relationships. So, hard, hard to say. Well, I've been on both sides. And sadly, I think I'm... It's not a good answer at all. But for me, it had to be a change from the partner. And that's kind of dark, actually, come to think about it, right? Yeah, As that's in, perfect. You communicated your needs, they changed, and now it's better. Yeah, but is that is that is that coercion a little bit? Mm, depends what it was. Well, I mean, it, it was really just like be more dominant. Hmm. But is that? Yeah, they don't mind that. No, you, I think it's completely okay to bring up something that would like make the sexual situation like more pleasing for you. That's what like communication is all about. If they well, say yeah, I'm they not com comfortable with that, yeah, exactly. That it. was not like that. Yeah. No, they were like. Okay, I'm interested in exploring that. Let's see how it goes, mm. and it's been, it's been good. Um, yeah. And yes, I don't know. Like it's just sort of you always feel bad when it's it comes boils down to like yeah, it's not me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I don't know whether it's not me. It's well, you I or put it's... so much fucking pressure on myself to like stay the same way, or, like or a certain weight, or like like put certain clothes or not put in certain clothes that I feel like I don't not to say that they don't do that too but that's not even they being the one person as such but like I don't know something is in me that is just like I put myself so, under so much pressure to be sexy to uh, uh, the other that I kind of want them to make an effort too which is kind of yeah. bad again like I'm being such a stereotypical fucking that's probably what my partner thinks about me though it's like why is she not making an effort oh shut up I think I think you are just my existence look at you look at yeah, you but like, but like there are times when people I've been dating have like you know wanted to have sex and I've not been interested like but that's not I don't know though I don't know because it's, it's a continual pattern it's a continual pattern when I'm with someone for a longer period of time it just is Okay, okay, and that's okay, why. yeah, yeah, but I guess, mean... like, I feel really bad that I'm now even questioning that, because that's my own personal experience, so I shouldn't know, that could also be different experiences. So. Yeah, I, yeah, I also just don't know, like, because, yeah, I haven't actually dated that many people. Yeah. I guess in my experience, like, the more you do it, the closer you are, the one heartbreaking, well, I mean, there's been many heartbreaking situations in my life as such, but one of them was when uh, it became a long distance thing, mm. after, like, a couple of years, and... And it's because we couldn't just like have that really active sex life that we did until then. I think that was one of the reasons why we broke up in the end, because we didn't have that connection, you know? Which 
just heartbreaking. Yeah. And so yeah, for me it's like yeah, as I say, super, super fucking important as such. And yes, I've also been on the other side of things as such where, um, yeah, I kind of wanted to do it like all the time, <laughs> and and the other, I don't know, had different commitments, interests. Um, I don't know. I think. I think. There was a certain. Yeah, yeah, and and that sucked that we didn't last long. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, it's about finding the balance. Like, if you think there are things that would turn you on more that you could try, and you haven't been able to voice it with your partner, try and find someone with whom you can voice that. If it's like a kink thing, there's fat life. If it's a different thing, there's like conversations. If you just have a low sex drive. Either find another partner with a low sex drive, there's plenty of them, there's also plenty, like a huge and thriving asexual community, that's where you think you might be at. But, or you can be like me and have my partner's constantly mildly sexually frustrated, but also we have a great relationship and I get what I want from it. But the thing, okay, I think this is it, I think this is where boys dance, right? What I said, like, it didn't last long because, like, I wasn't sure that the relationship was fine otherwise. That, like, yeah. basically what it was that in the end it broke apart not because of that, it was because of other things. But I convinced myself for a long time that it was that, I think, or whatever. But, like, it, if I would have reass been reassured that actually everything else is fine because it wasn't we like you know we broke up as such but um, perhaps what is what is happening is down to, it's down to you to reassure your partner perhaps that you fucking still like yeah. love them and all that, or, yes. or whatever whether you love them or not but you know like that you're still incredibly into them and they are you thrive for being with them in a relationship yeah, yeah. and that's what I always do with my partners is literally the whole like it's not you it's me thing but I mean it like yes. and it's like nothing to do with how I feel about you it's nothing to do with how much I enjoy spending time with you it's just that I don't have a particularly high sex drive and like for some people like Mariam it seems like sex for you is a very important part of like maintaining and establishing a deep emotional connection well for me that is manifested in different ways more through like I don't know like lying on the couch both of us reading our books together is like a really meaningful thing for me in terms of establishing a deep emotional connection so again it just depends on what for you and your partner is the way in which you express love and affection and how you can either have someone in which those match or have them as different things but understand that the, the love and care and affection is there despite the fact that you manifest it in slightly different ways yeah. again it's just not, it's, it's such a difficult conversation right again when I, when I was in that space where I wasn't necessarily like that turned on by my partner and whatnot like I would still like daydream and think about how could they approach me for me to be that and that's really bad actually and it'd be like if you only did like that routine or those things then I would get to that point and when they wouldn't like and then they would be like and this is really I know this is actually really bad this is really quite intimate and such but like I would be annoyed when they don't do that so hence I would want them less mm. it's actually really dark and really bad like because you create this I mean again we have a conversation eventually and that's where you know we arrive to the conclusion where it all works out as such but I mean not yeah I would be lying if I said that it was it was a, a, a that I didn't like desire them I just wanted them to like approach me in a certain yeah. manner I mean, I have that too, though, to be honest, like, even with everything I've just said, I'll have a certain, like, flash where I'm like, oh my god, if you came in right now and ravished me, I would just collapse, and I wish that, like, and I always have that, but it's like, again, they can't read my mind, like, they can't know that, right, in this second I'm horny, but, like, you know, 38 seconds later I'm not, like, and it's, and actually I know that oftentimes, like, this is in no way an anti-consent thing, but oftentimes once I start having sex with someone, I get really into it. But it's getting to that bit of like, oh, I'm kind of tired, or I kind of need a toilet, or like, oh, I just put my clothes on, or whatever. It's the getting from there to like, actually, yeah, having sex is fucking great, and it's super fun, and I really like it. Mm. It takes actually sometimes someone persuading me yeah. that I want to do it before I do it, which is obviously something you can only do if you really have established trust, etc. Mm. But, yeah. I think I've also learned that through the years of such, like, a, um, remembering how that feeling when you're coming kind of feels like to then put it in a box mm. and to remember like I don't really know why I'm saying no to this necessarily now because it's gonna be fucking amazing I just that need to so remember true. that and you kind of again it only came with experience as such where I learned to put to, to put that thing in like in a chest you know that I would I would I would carry with me that's actually a really good point and I think I could do well with remembering that like the remembering the fact that yeah when we're having sex and I'm like oh my god oh my god even, it's so good not even the having sex bit but like the orgasm mm. and also when they orgasm because I get such a high yes, of my partner's yes, coming yes, yes, yes. 
like it's so good I just, yeah it's just like yeah it's trying to remember those things when you're not like in the mood or whatever because yeah. it, it yeah. hopefully does get to that and even if it doesn't also like sex is also incredible not necessarily with someone coming as well yeah like, I mean, no definitely obviously that's like i didn't come from pension of sex most of the time like ever actually well, i think I've, I've already mentioned this yeah. in the show as well i think i've done it three times so yeah like, Pretty sick. Well, it's just... Yeah. So, but you know, it's true. And I feel like for me, I personally, I need to take more initiative when I'm in the mood to actually go for it, rather than like hoping that they can read my mind. And you know, yeah. So yeah, communication. Basically, they make sure that they know that it's not. It's not. A yeah, thing. that's a huge thing that you need to do. That I do. Or that a lot of people do. It is a damn thing, and so find a way to communicate. If it is a them thing and you don't want to be with them anymore, then leave them. If it's a them thing but there's other ways of like dealing with it, then communicate that, yeah. I think it's fine to have like, you know, kinks or ways in which you want to like explore your sex life that, that you can both like to your partner. Yeah, as well. And also like come to think of it like um so much of like our boredom with sex comes with the as you said, establishing a routine, right? Mm. So what about taking it to other spaces, you know? Like whether there are times of day, whether they're literally the friend flats or whether it's yeah. outside the flat whether it's in the nature that's you know super like huge for me actually like hotels, the whole sexy. thing about <laughs> yeah my whole thing about like oh okay once i know i know and like i don't mean that really in general i still like having sex with my partners but it takes me to the box space which you need to get but yeah changing it up a bit helps a lot but also yeah you might just not have a high sex drive and there are communities and people and places that you can explore that yeah i'm thinking toilet break okay you go first, I'll talk. Yeah, will you? Okay, or no. then I'll go. Okay, should we make a cut? No, just because it's like a... Oh, you're yeah, loud. I don't know. No, just like, then I could check if things kind of go. Okay, we're going to make a cut. Know. We are going to make a cut. Apologies. I don't think anyone's think actually been complaining about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's someone on the phone as well. Anyways, uh, one cut. I think that's yeah. okay. Thank you. We'll be back. Yeah. Hey, guys. We went to the toilet. Um, all right. Again, no judgment. Some people are into that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you want to buy our urine, I would be interested in discussing it further. No, but that will have our DNA. Well, most things will have our DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy. Yeah. yeah. Right. You, if you want to buy anything of mine, like nickels. Anything. Yeah. Anything. With Paul. <laughs> um. I don't think. I don't know. Like that's the thing. That's the thing. Is like. And then it's a conversation you and me have been having. It's like I think this show really demystifies well me, anyways. Uh, and I don't think any. I think people see how complicated people are, whereas people prefer easy mm, people as such. Or the, the mystique of the or the mystique yeah. of the unknown. That I don't necessarily think there would be anyone out there that is like, oh, those girls. Well, no, no. You, of course, of course, of course. You know, if you hypothetically you know I mean. would like to buy our urine but are not going to for financial reasons, please let us know to give us an ego boost. Yeah, just give us an ego boost, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I'm going to Nikon, I'm sorry. Thank you. That part of the show, folks. What, what, it's not part of the show? No, I said that part of the show. The part oh, where yeah, you start yeah. smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a bingo on this. There's oh, apples no. falling. I wonder we if live this... in a wholesome little house, yeah. and there are apples falling from the trees and a robin dancing around. I wonder if there's gonna be a triple A bingo at some point. We could do it at our um at our party. Should we give a little sneak preview? Yes. Go on. No, I can. So um, it, uh, no, I mean, wait, <laughs> hard in the first. No, it happens to be purely by accident that it's the best the, coincidence ever. You know, it is. It really is. That the uh, the day that our YouTube channel got launched happens to be 14th of February. Valentine's Day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, sorry, you're gonna do a thing. No, 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 like, we, you know, we all know what the day is exactly. So, uh, so we're thinking for one year anniversary. We should definitely throw a party. We already have a location in mind. It's gonna be a sick little club in East London, probably. Hopefully. And yep. yes. Uh, if it's still there, and so um, we think of also making up traffic light party, <laughs> which I know is like you know it's like shitty and teenager and also potentially like encourages negative behaviors. But if it's only people that have watched our show yes. and aren't assholes, and it's gonna be a very very strict consent policy, 
then we're gonna have a traffic light party. Not everyone knows what a traffic light party is. Oh, okay. So you wear green if you're single. You wear yellow. Oh, available. Or, available. Yeah. Yellow or orange if like it's complicated. You're not sure. And red if uh, not interested at all. Yeah. And you come along, and obviously we'll also maybe have stickers at the door in case people just want to wear their sexy clothing, but also want to. Oh yeah. Or like different kind of wristbands or something. Yeah. We'll have a glow sticks. Oh, but they die now. Just like your libido. <laughs> Well, yeah, um, maybe it's a good thing to have, like, the end date to yeah. the traffic light party. But basically, said. there's going to be ways in which you can wear your sexy regular clothing that I'm worry about, like, oh, shit, I haven't got a green outfit, no, no. I'm not, in fact, a wood elf. No, that, I, I, I thought you just put, like, a circle. Yeah, 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 yeah like, like a, a big badge, a badge. Or yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So that's going to be the thing. That'd be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're DJing, obviously, and we're hosting. Yeah, yeah our like, DJ name is Miss Spotify. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Sorry, that was um, at this other party Marianne hosted, which was very cool. We panicked because we were just making Spotify players and didn't have a DJ name, so we decided to call ourselves DJ Miss Spotify. <laughs> it was brilliant. I wish it was banging. It was a great lots party. Of, lots of people dancing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Alright, okay. If you're in we... London, or if you're not, get to London, 14th of Feb. Yeah, yeah you, can do, you can book yeah. your flights now. Yeah, just book your come and like, cry uh, with the rest of us when you don't get laid by the end of the night. Well, I mean, also the the party is likely to sell out that sort of stuff. So oh, maybe it? we should have like a. Should I love the question? Maybe we should have like a I don't know, some sort of tier system. Gosh, brutal. Mm, tent. People who've who've sent in questions get in first. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. People were having the same questions that gave us money or something. Definitely. <laughs> and people who sent us really really cute awesome feedback and subscribed. And ego boost. Ego boosts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is it my turn to read or your turn to read? Okay. Hey, it's the Insta Wanker back for another question. If you're curious about what oh, that wait, means. Oh, we're gonna do that one. Oh, wait, no, it's one by. It's not one I guess it's just like two people, like one person asking two questions. I think it's quite an important question, though. Okay, okay, okay. Do you okay. think? Yeah, fine. Yeah, if you think so, then that's I just think, I mean, we might not have good advice, but I think it's an interesting dichotomy. So, Insta Wanker back for another question. Still loving the show, still not loving the police. And that's what this question's oh, about. Oh, okay, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry, I knew the one you meant. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My best friend wants to be a cop, and obviously, as an anarchist, I'm not particularly keen on it. He knows I don't like cops, but we've never had a proper discussion on why before. Partly because I feel I'm very bad at arguing and don't want to sabotage my own cause, if that makes sense. Sometimes I think I can be alright, especially if one of my more left leading friends takes my side. But when it comes to the police or anarchism, I'm always on my own and I tend to get all hot and flustered and emotional and don't make very good points. So people use arguments which, if I read online, I wouldn't think they were very strong, but face to face they often stump me. Any tips other than just reading more theory? Basically what I'm asking is how do I not feel like a whiny, naive teenager when I'm talking about anarchism? And on a semi-related note, any advice for a guy who wants to get into the anarchist scene but struggles with social anxiety, especially when it comes to meeting strangers? We've answered our second part before. Yes. So, not that. But so, the cop stuff. So many feels. Mm. Um, so, you know how I said I, w- I would shag a Tory and all of that stuff? Like, a cop though? No. Never. No. Never. Because there's something very... Inst- that's the p- thing. It's like, you can have your opinion, so you can have like a side hustle. You know, obviously, those are, can be issues, all of that by themselves. But something about becoming part of the, whatever, that's Metropolitan Police or, you know, the different police services, some, not services, forces, elsewhere, it institutionalizes you yeah. to the point that is very, very difficult to go back from. And there, there's about, I don't know, there's years and years of training where they really, really break you and, and, and put you to a particular type of a of a human being that is not necessarily critically thinking you know so i think that is becoming that you do become a type of a person and yeah if you can just like avoid that at all costs yeah i mean i do think there is nuance because like for example a cop in Pennsylvania, i can't remember saying this but a cop in like my hometown where your job is basically just to like rescue kids from trees it's a different thing from the police having said that you can go into the police institution with the best intentions to be the nice man saving um kittens from trees and you will end up a part of a machine that systematically represses poor people, people of colour, people protesting for a better life, all of the things that you supposedly want to support. Full disclosure, when I was 15 I wanted to be a cop because I wanted to save people, I wanted to help people and I thought, oh you know, that's what cops do. And since then I've learned that is not what cops do. Some cops think that's what they're doing, they really do and I do not believe 
that every single cop goes into it with bad intentions. I think that's a naive thing. The point that Mariam is making is that whatever your intentions, you are put through a series of trainings, a process that will dehumanize the people that you are supposedly, yeah, that you're meant to, I don't know, fight against, you're meant to arrest. Like, you are not allowed to have a personal opinion. You're not allowed to have a hot take. You're not allowed to say, but hang on a second, in this circumstance, should we really? No, you are there to enforce laws that are racist, homophobic, sexist, like abusive, classist. hostile, classist, all of those things. The thing is, is that it's closer to military than it is to like civil service. Yeah. So many people say, you know, I want to change it from the inside. Uh, police is not an institution that changes from the inside. If it changes from above, it changes from changing governments. Governments can enforce certain style of policing, you know, whether that's more hands on or hands off. Um, so yeah, perhaps your friend would be interested more than in going into politics if that, you know, that is also us being two anarchos also understand that that's there's an invitation to that as well you know what for me like the the obvious answer here kind of is is like why call why not the yeah. sex that is a firefighter oh, yeah. oh my god if you want we were talking about this the other day if oh. you want to help people do sexy <sighs> stuff feel macho <sighs> Be in a union, support the working class. Be in a uniform. Be in a uniform. There is nothing hotter than a firefighter. Damn son. Damn son. Seriously, you know, so many, we were kind of thinking about yeah. this off air. It's just like, some people go like, oh, how can I be more attractive to ladies? Or like, what do you do? It's just like, honestly, just oh become God, yeah. a firefighter. Even when they're not that cute. Yeah. They're still fucking cute. Yeah, they're still cute. Like, there's probably not a firefighter I wouldn't bang. 100%. Like, well, Michael from Love Island. Was the bad boy. Was he a firefighter? Oh, he was a little shirt. Like, okay, apart from Michael. Shirt. But then again, like he's a hot as fuck. So yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, that's a really good point. If your if your friend's idea is that he wants to like help people and save people, he could do that. He could be a paramedic. He could yes. do any of the other like really important. Be a coast guard. Be a, be a lifeguard. Any of these really cool like nine 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 numbers that are actually helping people. Yeah. And if that's not the reason he wants to be a cop, if it's not because he wants to help people, you need to make him sit down and explain exactly why he wants to be a cop. Yes, because he's probably looking at what the police is doing now and being like, I'm more related to this, which means that it's not just this like innocent desire to to help as such, it's to be part of that particular class and that has its own implications with it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Work, I, yeah, they're against the working class. They're against protest movements. Every single right that I don't know what country you're in, every single right that has been won has been in one through struggle against the police at the time who were enforcing the status quo at the time. Yeah, there is one of this. Yeah. Oh, one of the kind of still possibly when I just think about it. So, uh, but my access, you will definitely know who that is as such. As you know, he would get into conversations with the police as such, and we kind of got this really fascinating. Uh, insight into their thinking in this one particular exchange um, where again it was like a, I think it was a, I want to say it was anti-raids protests, something, definitely something to do with, with race issues in, 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 in London and we were there protesting it as such and, and again my ex got into conversation and the cop was like you know what you know how you think we're racist and that but you're like you're the same way against the police you know you just think you, know, you judge us all. You know, you think we're the same with this particular way. And my partner at the time was like, literally like, a uniform is not a race. For fuck's sakes. Yeah. And it's just like, what is that? And I was like, oh, gotta find yeah. your heart. <laughs> but it's, that's how they think. Yeah. That's how they think. Well, that's why like, Blue Lives Matter has actually taken off in some states in the US as a concept. They which literally is think like, yeah, wearing a uniform is the same as having yeah, rights. Like, that's absolutely because of the job that I chose. <laughs> I mean, Okay, so actually, I don't know if you're from the US, but I've noticed this really interesting phenomenon in the last few months. In, um, I'm, in a, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, and a lot of them are dominated by US people, where there's this been very like rejuvenated interest in the concept of ACAB. And the way in which Americans are using it in this forum are like, I'm ACAB, and then people being like, oh god, you're ACAB. I think ACAB is like an allegiance, like Antifa or something. And so people have made groups called like, ACAB this, and other people have made groups saying like, oh, here they go, bringing in ACAB again. Or like a cab, a cab, and it's like I'm sorry, a cab just means all cops are bastards, and has been around as a slogan in Europe for like 50 years. And so I'm very, I'm interested whether like the the I don't know if you're in the US, but if you're like falling into this weird dichotomy where he's therefore feeling like uh like attacked because by the the a cab crew because it's become it's become this very weird weird online battle between the a cabbers who are super obnoxious to be honest, even though they hate the cops, and the anti a cabbers. But it's still like, the right opinion and the wrong opinion. Yeah, though. but it's just become weird. It's about like you know the way how Americans have managed to bastardize like Antifa into like the idea of a group, 
rather than just like uh yeah on the internet yeah really i don't know i I, i'm still shocked that anyone would think it's a group because there are of course affinity groups but it's still not an organization no i know but it's just like that and it's happened with a cab for some reason now you're either an a cab or not an a cab and it's very but that's okay no like i i'd say we are a cab and people that we trust are a cab and anyone who isn't is like not okay i just find it weird that a cab has become like like a noun i guess rather than like a concept like I'm not a cab. I, I believe that all cops are bastards, but I am not like. But but you are. We are. But I just don't. But we're anti fa. Yeah. As well. But and we're anarchists and feminists. But the point is, those are like um, what's I'm trying to make? They're like interests or political beliefs attached to my person, not like my identity. Is it not your identity? I feel like it's part of my identity. though. I don't think so. Not I have the like way fundamental that, distrust. I don't know. It's hard to explain to you because it's just like something I see Same on the like internet. Same like anti-racist, you know. No, I, that that, I don't disagree with you on that. I think I'm just explaining it badly the way in which it's manifesting on the internet. No, I think what you're trying to say is what I fully agree with. And it's sad because the majority of our uh, viewership is now American. I, c- I could not organize with Americans. Like, I'm just mm. putting it out there. Like I, And I do every now and then still to this day. But it's just like something about American left that yeah. I just can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> And it just makes everything into these very, like, instead of having an argument about, like, why we're against the police, which is what we're doing right now, it becomes, I'm a cab or you're not a cab, and therefore they just throw this word a cab around rather than actually getting they, into what the argument is. I mean, again, our friends' stories from, yeah, from the American left. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I, so I think what you're describing, the just, limitations yeah. of, of the, of the, um, I don't know, um, yeah. It's I mean, like they turn into a brand, if you like. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Rather than a political force that actually has a meaning behind it that comes from, like, a history of, like, The other thing I wanted to mention actually is that like most people who are ACAB are ACAB because they have either themselves or seen people very, very close to them, not only news stories, but actually people they know closely be treated like shit by the cops. If that's sexual abuse, physical abuse, like harassment, threat, like we're not just ACAB, people we know and love have had horrific experiences with the police, not to mention the national news stories like Mark Duggan, um, well, sure, all no, the people in the US I mean, like, like the, the, the broader laws, the broader um, law system and law enforcement is not that to punish people with class interests yep. it is that to punish people that are protesting in any shape or form against the ruling class you know that's literally what it is police force and the in the state uh, created police force is not that to protect the neighborhoods because we had people protecting neighborhoods uh, and, and like villages for as long as they have existed yeah. this is not some sort of like community support in any shape or form because that comes from a community and 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 there is a certain amount of trust and and, and accountability to that this is not it this is a very pol- police is a very a new idea really uh, that comes from around Victorian times and such where state had to have an apparatus to enforce upon uh, what has become uh, like different class identities you know so there's a rich it, it, again it's just, I, I think it's the biggest the biggest failure of, of us as the left that we have allowed this idea um, for liberals to even think that police is there to protect the everyday person yes. because like up to so basically it's not it, it it is not the result of the police that that happens to be it's 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 basically it happens what's the word despite of its uh yeah. existence not in spite of it or yeah. the other way around yeah, <laughs> anyways but mean. yeah it, it's it, a byproduct it's not a the byproduct cause. not the yeah. cause absolutely it's just like it's a nice little add-on perhaps to some people that police sense like tends to solve a little bit of the crime out there and i don't know be a somewhat of a force that will perhaps protect or you know detract someone from doing it but that is a tiny reason for the existence of the police force historically and i think once one understands that that there is way less of an incentive to really become that hero because you see it more of a, as as a more as an institution with its own goals rather than um individual people creating something that is meant to to, to challenge the current yeah. state of yeah, community defense has consistently been undermined and destroyed by the cops because they don't want that. That is not what they're interested in. No, no, and again, they're interested in more funding, you know, because they can, uh, I guess, provide certain proof of, 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 of solving a particular amount of crime, which a lot of the time is very little and most of the time is not nothing to do with clashes with, you know, women yeah. or people of color and, and that sort of stuff.
like I mean, in London, there's obviously a lot of debates at the moment about like the fact that the police force is cut and they want to re-expand the police force to combat knife crime, whereas they're simultaneously shutting down youth centres and shutting down like rehabilitation centres and shutting down like uh, it, like good like initiatives that are trying to get people out of gangs. Instead, they they are destroying the funding for those things that are actually doing concrete on the ground work, or simultaneously saying we need more cops because of knife violence. They are not interested in solving crime. They are not interested in stopping crime. They are interested in protecting the class interests of the middle and upper classes. Absolutely. Again, the same conversation goes about the, the industrial um, prison complex, yes. right? So incarceration complex is that, and uh, the people that come out from prisons have very little funding towards really uh, establishing themselves as members of the community in any shape or form, and have to a lot of the time then go back. To crime and so it's it's a, it's a loop it's a circle yeah. and they're not interested in making no what the world safer or people's no, lives better no and I think yeah precisely I mean, if there is a way for you to, I guess your question was in the very nice way you're being like hey how can I explain that to my pal in non condescending you know in a manner that is non condescending mm-hmm. and I think we definitely sounded condescending here but just because we have seen way too many of our loved ones like beat up by these people and like destroyed by these people and incarcerated by these people so we just have a natural hatred um, and it isn't just the idea of like oh there's a few bad apples they are trained to be like this there might be a few good apples that escape the training no doubt i'm sure maybe but no it's institutional yeah. it's really unlikely that your friend is going to be able to be one of the good apples and if you are a cop and you try and stand up against the other cops you're treated like shit as well oh, like yes. the pe- the cops who try to actually speak out about it they- yeah, and you should look into percentages of, yeah. of the police that are supporting, you know, far right groups and stuff yes. like that. There's so much. I mean, what's happening in Hong Kong now? It's, it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. And it's and it's and it's universal. It's yeah. just universal, and it's because it's fundamental. It's yeah, it's fundamental um, reason for existing is yeah, it's providing is it, is 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 continuing the 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 safety of the class interests of the upper class and yeah. so. Anyways, so hopefully you can explain a little, I guess, that we told you here in a non-condescending manner to yeah. your friend. Well, show, show them the video. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we hate the cops. And I know it's very flippant and easy to say that, but I think we've explained why. Yeah. Again, plenty of text around us. We're, yeah. you know, we're saying sure it in a very sort of basic girl but way. Yeah, yeah. But um, um, again, just, I don't know. Why? Yeah, as I always say, why not a fire? Yeah, why not a firefighter? Put that to them. Make them explain why cops yeah. specifically is what they want to do. Make them watch Line of Duty. Make them watch Training Day. Make them watch all these movies and TV series about corrupt cops and show just how easy it is. Yeah. Don't watch Brooklyn Nine Nine. That specializes it. Thank you so much for asking us. This like the, the the idea that people trust us enough, like and trust not only our like advice on whatever relationships or whatnot, but our actual political opinions. Yeah, that's, that's actually really nice. Fucking awesome. Yeah, that's really I and mean, cool. we love all the relationship questions too. But it's nice to have the chance to explain the stuff that we don't normally say which is like also if you want more of our political rant- rantings please follow us on twitter at mm. rowan talks at mariam did uh, yeah we, we i i i overuse twitter way the way too. that you just said that rowan talks mariam did it makes it sound like i talk you used to i thought about this one time that we have this thing going on talks and did yeah like, <laughs> mariam talks uh, no sorry rowan talks mariam did but she stopped because Rowan talks too much. <laughs> I think was it was a hero. I was saying like if I were ever gonna marry someone, I would have a double surname with like Mariam did X. <laughs> That's great. We should definitely do that. <laughs> Shit, I don't have any punny names. <laughs> my closest is how my ex's name rhymed. Last name rhymed with my first name. You remember his yeah. last name? Yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that. That would have been such a good reason to get married. Alas. I mean, not just that though. No, not that. You know. Yeah. We might still. <laughs> <laughs> I would honestly. <laughs> you would. Really. Weird. I would. Oh my god, weird. No, but like. <gasps> but politics though. With me? No! Okay, we're really good. What do you mean, what politics? Do you have the same politics? No, but the. The. The, the, the relatives. The relatives? 
He's Are we talking about the same person? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's the one that... I don't know. It's very hard trying to keep a show anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on and discuss this after the show. I think it's the same one. Anyway, yeah, but why the relatives? Well, because! And that's why I would marry, but that's also not why I would marry. That's why you would marry, for the relatives. Oh my god, this oh, is insane. Oh, I know what you're talking about now! Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, yes! Yes! But yes. also, the, 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 the... Broader philosophy. Well, that, 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 yes, but also why, why I would marry. The money. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> But you do know we fucking love you also, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. On the regs, we say how we love you. Also, I feel like I have to veto that for, like, personal reasons. What? Did I marry him? Yeah. It's okay, I won't marry him then. Yeah. I'm okay. not marrying him! Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! I feel like I would be, like, jealous, which doesn't make sense. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that But you, you asked us when we were on holiday, like, would you live together for a million pounds? We were like, yeah, of course, definitely. Well, I would do it for less than that, so... Uh, well, I would do it for... A tisky. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. You see, we're fighting over here. Yeah, weird. Weird. Um, oh, okay, this is a complicated one. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Amazing. Get fucked up. Hi, one for AAA. I don't think you've touched upon this theme yet, but I hope the emotional implications of my questions now make it suitable for your show. In short, how to deal with right-wing booties at work. So a few years ago, I started a new job and it became quite clear early on that I was working with a few racist scumbags. After first uh, lightly challenging people and letting slip my anti-fascist activities, the target then became me. I think initially trying to people's uh, friends, not challenging people, saying racist crap and being too light-hearted gave the green light for shit to continue and get worse rather than them stopping. I am politically isolated and then the power imbalance of first having to learn about the job gave them the advantage. The makeup of the people, two outright Tommy Robinson supporters, one old racist fucker, one bully who uses my politics to do so, just these four people shaped the politics atmosphere in a workplace of 25. The effect of this bullying has been that sometimes I pull sickies just so I couldn't have to see someone. So it was just so I wouldn't have to see someone. It's been detrimental to my confidence as a whole. And one incident where my physical safety was put in danger by someone at work. The diversity of people you might see as allies are non-existent here. If you don't like football and don't have a missus, you're an outsider. In the years I've worked here, I've learned you can't compromise your beliefs and pretend not to hear things. When debating with people, you have to call out personal attacks as a result of not having a fully formed argument. Even writing this out and thinking about things over the past few years has made it clear to me that they were bullying me and fuck these dickheads. I really look forward to what you have to say and hope you can help anybody in a similar situation. You absolute fucking babe, man. I just like wanna hug you. Hug you and kill just your coworkers. Kill your coworkers, <laughs> but also just like Do you know how fucking difficult it is to stay still like in your positions like that when all of this pressure is behind you. I'm thinking again like about my Russian relatives and all that stuff, how they succumb to shitty politics just because everyone else does. And so this person is not doing that. Yeah, and you've been there for years. Like, you didn't leave after a month, which is what I would have done. Like, that well, is but then, th But that's the thing, the obvious, and that's probably what you think, the obvious answer is just like, oh, just change the jobs. But like, there must be a reason why that's not happening, right? Because like, it is clearly probably either it's a small place, Either like there must be something that's stopping them yeah. from that. But also like from the makeup, it sounds like it's possibly like maybe I'm just making the judgment, but like a very like working class work environment. Well, exactly. Which yeah, means yeah. they possibly can't leave for financial reasons or whatever. Like which I understand. So there are two <sighs> ways of answering this, right? Like the first one, and I think the thing is that I think you're probably gonna know a lot of the ways we're gonna tackle this. Is that like so? I'm a big believer and an organizer in the trade union movement, and I think. Basic, and I know for a fact that bullying at work is something that the good trade unions do take very seriously. And if there is a way for you to have that conversation you know, with the union and them to, uh, to, to, to impose that on your boss, then that would be fucking brilliant. However, I also fully understand the limitations of that because like, your boss would be like, hey, so I have 24 guys that love me, do work for me, and like probably align with my politics. And then this guy is like, 
kind of like create some trouble here saying that this is not an okay work it's actually moment. illegal though like, Dis- what the fuck? discrimination based on political beliefs is is illegal and like if you wanted to you would actually be able to take a lawsuit against the no but then they would say it's a discrimination against our political beliefs okay one okay if we're talking strategy keep a diary of all the times that you're mistreated by them Good idea. just do this in the like medium term no matter what the other advice is because it might come to a head and you will need evidence and if keep you a, can record it as well yeah. sound recordings sound recordings keep a diary of encounters of you know words said of being left out of maybe a group project or something like being missed for a promotion all of these things keep a ongoing diary try not to backdate it as much as you can because that will be if it ever comes to tribunal situation that will be killer yeah so just, just keep doing that anyway eventually i feel like this is going towards the tribunal as is and and I, I think there is a lot of chance with that, especially since they are taking harassment at work way more, more and more seriously. Yeah. So yeah, if you can have a log of these things and memos, you know, memos, so you literally post yourself a letter with this sort mm-hmm. of thing, you know, so that would be incredibly important. So yeah, get those fuckers, you know, get them on. However, again, it's just like, okay, so I'll tell you a story that happened to me quite recently at like Shadow Basin. I was just bathing there and um, I don't know, I had my like, what it is but most people do and there was this gang of like well i say gang is just like whatever it's just like uh there was a group of people like about 15 of them well no about 12 of like kids like i'd say 12 to 16 year olds um and two of them became like violently violently look began utilizing language towards me that was quite violent um, quite violently misogynistic literally saying to their friends two meters next to me about how they would rape me in these sort of ways and what they would do to my body I uh, mean again they were kids and I you know didn't have much to do except for move to the other part of the particular space you know but what what happened is that I realized that there were two people that were instigating this and then the rest were yeah. you know the the rest were following because that's 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 their status quo. That's what I was thinking. It works with twenty five, right? And this is four people. That means there's twenty potential people to who, whose minds you can change. You know what? So again, the way that you change the culture in the workplace is that you create an alternative that is more fun. I mean, again, that's a lot of work, but is there a way for you to uh, invite the good guys to a pub, maybe do buy a couple of rounds, invite them to like curry dinners, basically get the other twenty people. To, for you to be the politics of seduction, you know, and, and uh, for you to be the guy that is actually attractive, where you introduce them to class interests, like uh, to, to the idea of class interests, and and who, you know, knew. at the end of the day, it is not, again, the migrant or the woman or whatever that are improving one's material conditions, or like, this, sorry, affecting one's material conditions. It is through class organizing and trade unionism and, and sort of that class solidarity where we can create those differences. Yeah, and also in low medium term, if you don't feel like, um, like I think that's very important to do, but I also think to be able to bring up those issues, like befriending in a casual sense, just as you, and not the, and I'm not saying hide your political views, but like you, you have other interests, like be it sport, be it video games, be it gardening, be it knitting, like talking, like yeah, going out for pizza with some of the other co-workers, maybe in a group of two or three or four or whatever, yeah. and like talking about your other things, making them like you, because even yeah. if they don't know your politics, if they like you as a person, they're much less likely to let this happen. Like, I don't know what your relationship with the other 20, you seem to, you, you speak as if they are kind of irrelevant, but are influenced by these guys. Probably they're also fucking scared by these guys, at least some yeah. of them, like, they're not on a mass of 20, the same people. Like, they're scared or they're vulnerable or they just want to get on with their job, but you can make them your friend. You can give them a lift home. You can buy them a drink if they look sad. You can, you know, have a chat by the water cooler. Like, you can make yourself a person who is the f- a friend and then you can use that to create an alternative narrative in the office yeah. and like yeah even go as far as what Marianne says and actually like yeah organize against them because but you need allies sadly you can either leave and like do the tribunal yeah. method or you need allies in the workplace yeah. oh my god this is and when i left that space at the end you know after being so um useless at well not useless but like what you want to do with the kids though? Well, you but I will be—I will be lying if I said that I didn't plan to get that to happen to them. Actually, because like they need to be afraid, like they fucking need to yeah. be afraid. So some okay, there's a dark side. Fuck it, I don't give a shit. Um, pass the pass on details about them to some local anti-fascist network. 
I am not inciting anything here. I'm just saying that this sort of they are fascists. They're, they're fascists. The they're they're fascists. fascists, and they need to be challenged. Yes. So if there's a way to do that, yeah, I agree. Like there are anonymous ways of doing that, you know, and there are ways of of really uh, make them be aware that that's not the sort of thing to do. Yeah, I don't have to be anything connected with you. No. I mean, it's only what Tory Robinson demo coming up another month, twenty third, I think. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Yeah, maybe they'll be there. Maybe we should know their faces. Maybe. And on that note, I'm hoping that was. Yeah, I mean, sure, but sweet. Like, I mean, I don't feel like we're saying anything that, yeah. Yeah, that you haven't thought about. No, like, it, it's, you're, like, you're fucking yeah. fucked. Like, that's really fucking yeah. bad. Either try and build a support network, try and take a, an actual employment, like, dispute up yeah. um, with evidence, therefore the diary situation, or leave, which I understand is possibly not possible, but yeah. Or, there or... Are... are we allowed to say that? No. Okay, can you cut that then? Can you bleep it out? Yeah. That'd be funny. Or, beep! Yeah, fine. Great. Cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. Are we not allowed to say that then? Is that inciting violence? Oh, and I'm gonna have to also probably bleep just that now. Yeah, we have to bleep all of that. <laughs> bleep, 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 bleep. Oh, okay. This is the one that that you wanted to do. I don't know if I want to do it. Wait. Oh yeah. Okay. Now I do. I thought it was the. The other Instagram one, the race one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we don't want to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. Complicated that's, one this is a, no. Yeah. But also, like, we are replying with them on te- in text, you know. Yeah. Oh, are we not covering the race one? Yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to top us up with soda while I read out? <laughs> okay. Hey, I ain't expecting you to have all the answers to my issues, yet you make a lot of sense in your vids. So I had this growing issue of being spontaneously hooked really intensely by random girls around to a point. I'm an older guy and I think it's related to my age-old consumption of porn, which makes it that I'm repeatedly hyping girls around as far as their looks fit with my appeal for eye candy. This has been starting to be a major problem as it is borderline on stalking, harassment and potentially abuse. No, but this is- But I given don't... I'm deaf not a talkative guy, this gets more into some ob- obsessive staring and stalking. Honestly, I don't feel good about this, and it's obviously out of place to me, thank you. But yet when it happens, you know it's way too strong, or at least has a delay in my awareness of what I'm doing. At several instances, it did get me into this awful situation where I became the stalker, and that's the kind of outcome that makes me want to stab myself for years afterwards. I did manage to untie that once in a while by going straight up to girls I'm attracted to and telling them the basics, that I find them hot and so on. Though on the other hand, that direct approach doesn't seem like the proper attitude or pickup line for me to develop anything with them. <laughs> But it does ease for me for a while, and girls tend to feel appreciated at least, instead of threatened or oppressed by my otherwise stalky behaviour. I get there might not be a straight advice you give me, but any mindful reactions might be welcome. So, at first when we saw that question, we were worried this was like a baited question, because it is that like dark, and there was just like a bit of like, what do we do? There's not really like a correct way of like approaching this. Except However, saying, don't stalk. No, but again, this is way more complicated, and like for us to unpick this. And again, you know what, thank you for writing this in, thanks for reflecting, as well as, you know, like, I don't want this to just be a show by lefties to lefties, you know? And this is the sort of question that I can totally see coming from the other side of the barricades as such um you think they're self-aware enough to like recognize no, thinking behavior as i don't know i don't know i don't know but at least it's not just like at least it's something different as such sure. okay so um i think what is fundamentally here and what is uh i think shown in uh, three instances in this question you mentioning porn you mentioning stalking and you mentioning pickup is that fundamentally you don't necessarily see women as people with their own agency as people that can as people that would like to establish their own boundaries as people that have to uh, do certain labor that they don't you know like that that basically that puts them on a spot just because they're the women sometimes putting some putting themselves out there sometimes not um, so I think fundamentally you have to like really ground your political views further 
in the frame in in in, in the frames of, of of feminism and women's agency and such i think this is here is like the lacking the lacking link where you don't really understand what sort of that that sort of behavior will make a woman feel like as such or it sounds like you come to that light sometimes and then you want to stab yourself for years or whatever i mean to me what what i find i find this question slightly out of our depth purely because um the way in which you've you've talked about this uh, behavior like manifesting it sounds like some kind of switch like you have this compulsion and you're aware of it in your down moments but when you're in there you have no option but to i mean i don't have the stalking manifest but to follow a girl around or to obsess over her online images or to do these things there is an obsessive trait in you that you're aware of and for some reason it's being like triggered by hot girls and honestly i think that you need to see therapists but it's the, the, the what i'm trying to get to is that like you are dehumanizing the other side mm. it's like it's only based on your own desire i don't disagree right? with you yeah. I, I agree with that point i just i genuinely think you need to see a therapist i think that if you're if but you cannot there- control your 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 desire for someone which has as you say it manifests in an instant you see a hot girl and you feel a compulsion to act a certain way towards her that level of compulsion that you have been that you're acting on that you're not able to repress is to me something that is extremely worrying and i think i do think that we cannot offer the professional help for that aspect of it that is required and i would genuinely consider seeking some kind of therapy over that having that being said on the other half of it as mariam already said there are certain behaviors and um uh, beliefs maybe that we can help you on it. Well, that's the thing. I think, as you say, that you can approach this in, in two ways. As in, like, what I imagine uh, a, a a a psychologist would say is that, and if all prescribed would be a certain um, cognitive behavior therapy, yes, right? Yes, so, so so we'd be like, okay, yes. If you're feeling that trigger, these are the the actions or the paths yeah. of your thought that you should be taking, because and so they will see it as like a pathology as such, and kind of put it down to that but what I'm trying to I guess get to is that like the underlying the underlying issue here is just like you don't see women as people with their own agency that will suffer from this sort of behavior as in I mean that can also happen you know in in in, dif- in different ways if one is like I don't know like a, a I don't know just like a person with stories of violence towards I don't know dudes on it say dudes towards dudes it's just like I don't know how it's... Yeah, abuse comes from a dehumanization. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That doesn't have to be towards women as such, but like you don't necessarily just see their point of view. You don't understand what it means to feel like the weakness of not having the ability to block that out of your life, to not to not have to deal with this, to to um, to be able to say no to this. And I think what you're trying to say there at the end is just that like a lot of the times you got away with it because it's flattery. Um, and that's really fascinating because, for instance, just yesterday someone commented on my Twitter and I just did this like, I was kind of dumb selfie why I didn't look pretty in, in it at all. But someone was like, oh, you know, now I've got uh, the, the kind of confidence to tell you that that's a, that's a good selfie. They literally just said that's a good selfie. But they were like, but I didn't know whether you'd be okay with that. And I was just like, for a good few moments, I was like, you just said it's like a good selfie, surely that how could anyone think that's bad yeah it's not saying like i want to suck your tits yeah, like, yeah 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 so i thought like surely that's just like but i mean absolute. careful i guess but then again but then there will be some people that we're putting themselves out there and not necessarily waiting for any reaction that sort of goes back to a little bit to the question of like can i touch can i touch my, well, myself to someone someone's instagram pictures it's not like of course not everyone thinks that you're going to utilize that medium in that sort of sense however you know everything we put ourselves out there as such is kind of utilized that way i guess my issue though is that like this is not a genuine attraction this is a like hot flush this is a bonus yes, this yes, is not like yes. i'm interested in a person i'm going to pursue a relationship this is i have seen a girl for a split second and i have decided that i'm obsessed with her that's a very different thing like yeah obviously we all see someone in a bar and we're like oh man that person's so hot yeah like, and, and then we them. go back and maybe fantasize them about them yeah. as well you know? or we go up and talk to them or whatever but, but what's it's the it's the continuity of it with random different girls yeah. that is what's concerning me it, like you seem to be undiscerning and like you've limited your like porn addiction which is good but this like i've seen a hot girl like, okay i recently watched this um, netflix series you have you watched it okay it's a very very interesting exploration it's from the point of view of this guy that sees this hot girl and it starts from his perspective and and you know he starts to date her and he starts that and you ba- basically end up realizing that he's a stalker mm. And like, so she thinks they've had a nice day and she goes home. He stands outside her apartment all night and watches her in her house. 
and this continues and it's all from his point of view so you see all of his like abusive stalking behaviors and yet you're somehow made to be sympathetic with him because he's really in love with her and she's so interesting and this and this and it's a very interesting portrayal of exactly why these behaviors wow, it goes to her head which is very very gruesome i'm not gonna ruin it for you but um the point is that like yeah no the, your behavior is completely fucking unacceptable but like there's not there's no final uh kind of stage to that behavior either as well as in like how are you gonna it's not like you're probably fantasizing about having a family or being with them or falling in love with them you're probably fantasizing about like hooking up with them but um i think i don't think there are many scenarios where someone uh, like as you even worded yourself if someone's stalking you that that will go towards that person like no. wanting to do that with you as such not never i mean that never happens, i'm saying you know? never stalk someone okay okay so what okay of course yes yes yes, yes. and i think that's that's them utilizing the language but for instance like what if you're like a reply guy right and you just sort of like i guess just compliment someone yeah, for like all the time that, under fine. she can block you if she wants to that's fine oh yeah that's a different thing like i guess I, i'm you oh you think of like irl because i'm yeah, thinking online I, yeah, I just realized yeah this. Yes, yes yeah i'm totally thinking irl yeah like, no yeah fuck that's me. why i'm being so hard yes on this. i'm yes. seeing it i'm imagining he sees a hot girl on the street and he follows her home yeah no yeah okay i guess i didn't see it as that i sort of saw it more as a like oh like i have this okay. image of like the the pretty girls <laughs> online and so i become <laughs> yeah okay i mean that's also like creepy in its own way but it's not as is it creepy though so i wonder it, it depends how far it goes i well, think yeah, sure. like that's that's the point with everything there's like i'm interested in this person i'm gonna like look through their facebook profile pictures fine we've all done that and then there's yeah but like yeah, yeah so no, I, no, I guess it IRL. is creepy if it's like if it's if it's but can we agree irl yeah 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 like, yeah 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 yeah, 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 like, yeah jesus and that's why i didn't even want to answer the question because i was like we, the only thing we can say is don't stalk someone. I just can't. I guess because I live in London, like there's just like effort to do that. Yeah, I, I just don't even I imagine. Just read this Twitter, Twitter thread by this girl who like met this guy in the library, and then she like he went to her workplace and stalked her like crazy for like six months until she had to get like restraining orders oh and shit. Oh my god! So I was totally IRLing this. This is so fascinating. We need yeah, to totally be more specific. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Online obsession is a different beast. Well, yeah, like IRL stalking is a different beast. Yeah. From, like, when okay. I <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Like, you're fucking creep. Yeah. That, <laughs> thank you. I was like, she's being so kind. What is happening here? <laughs> I was like, she's being so harsh. What is happening? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's pretend you're talking about online because I think we've we've said yeah, no, yes, to no, life. no. You're fucking weird. But stuff. Like, okay, online obsession <laughs> over weird, people like, just is. Evil. We've all done it. It's not great. Try not to do it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, being a reply guy is fine because she does have the choice to block you if she doesn't want that kind yeah. of content, which is fine. Yeah. Sliding in someone's DMs with like sexually explicit material, don't do that. No. Sliding in someone's DMs with like I want a drink or something, fine, but be prepared to be ignored. At the end of the day, I don't know. I just, it, it's just all very melancholic, right? Like you're kind of descending to those sort of behaviors in order to just like love yourself. Like, not to end up in the situation where you just like love yourself enough, where you don't have to go for these girls that you think are everything, and you're never gonna be able to like have them. Hence, you have to impose yourself on them like that. You know, like you might as well like find someone that you have the same interest in. Sans the porn and the stalking. But like you said earlier, like it's about like basically a fundamental like lack of respect for women yeah. and not seeing their agency. Like he hasn't said that he's pursued them because he wants a relationship with them. He's pursued them in relation to his porn addiction, yeah. which suggests to me it's a purely sexual thing, yeah. which is I've seen a pretty woman and I'm now fantasizing graphic sexual images about her and I'm actually acting on that fantasy. Yeah. Like, thinking that just because you know they're showing themselves out that they might be similar to porn actresses hence they will uh, like yeah. agree to do something and i'm sorry them. like porn actresses do not just have sex with random people they have sex with people who they choose to as part of like a contract and payment and, and hopefully like hopefully paid a lot yeah hopefully well. paid a lot like it's a transaction just like everything else like you're stop watching porn maybe you know, no, don't you stop a... watching porn. Just watch feminist porn. There's some good out there. There's some good porn out there. But know? I don't know, like, because to me it sounds like it's the content of just seeing. No, that's true. Constantly, as well. every time he sees a hot woman, it's for her in a sexually explicit scenario. Therefore, that's all he can think of with women in sexually explicit scenarios. I think maybe he needs a break from the whole porn thing. Maybe he doesn't watch some rom coms, like watch something where like 
the romance of a relationship is what's fetishized. The, the mm-hmm. dating and the flirting and the everything apart from the graphic sexual scenarios, because that's... Because also like, porn is not real sex. Like, I mean, the, the stuff that is from such particular angles, with such particular lighting, people that are wearing lots of makeup and have a lot of work and done a lot of time that also, like, plan their poses mm. in advance. It's choreographed. You know? It's choreographed as fuck. So I think you're fetishizing what pornography is way too much, you know? And that's not us being, like, some sort of, like... Oh, I watch porn. Yeah, we can watch porn. <laughs> watch the hell about yeah. porn. But, like, it's so great because there's so much, like, good porn out there right now as well. Not just, like, a very limited um, yeah. selection. But, um... But, yeah, yeah, I think I, I, you should probably demystify in your head as to the sort of sexual encounters that you... I mean, have you had many IRL sexual experiences? Like... And not just like fucking, but like like meaningful like emotional connections with people as well, because I don't know, just everything about this sounds really unhealthy to me. And yeah, like I said at the very beginning, I think you should like find a therapist for how your well, relationship with wedding women is manifesting. Are we slut shaming someone in a sense? No, I'm not slut shaming him. I'm I'm the, your way in which you're treating and relating to women is problematic shaming him. And I think that this trigger, this trigger where it goes from being interested in someone to stalking behavior within a very short period of time, I think relates to some underlying issues. Well, I think it's lack of respect, fundamentally. I think it's lack of respect, yeah, I think it's misogyny. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think you need help with why that that switch is happening. And you know what, it could kind of bring back to the boys and like Shadow Base and a bit it's just like you know they, I told them only a couple of sentences because I was so overwhelmed by them they were like taking my stuff and that sort of stuff it's just like it's like what if what if I was your sister you know and they didn't even change them but like I think that's the one thing that hopefully would work I saw a great thing on Twitter today that said um, whenever you think or say something like whenever you're thinking about saying something to a woman write it down and give it to your mum mm. if you can't do that don't say it yeah. And I was like, that's real nice. Yeah, that's it. I mean, again, though, like, it's okay to be, not vulgar, but it's okay to be graphic, you know, consensual In a consensual way, though. Yeah. It's not consensual yeah, until exactly. she said that she's interested. Yeah. No woman wants sexually explicit stuff said to her, either IRL or online, until she's had the... Yeah, until she's had the opportunity to say yes or no. Well, but then again, like, we said, oh, you know, validate us, right? Yeah, but not by saying, like, I want to suck your tits, but by saying, like, hey, you guys are doing great material. No, but, like, a certain amount of, like, you know, if someone paid you a compliment on your looks, right? Like, you should, you would still be, sure. hopefully... But I feel like we've covered this before in our, like, how to flirt without yeah, being yeah, creep yeah. stuff. Like, there are ways of, like, complimenting women that aren't explicit and don't make them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, when you are complimenting a woman, like, it sounds like at the end you were saying you said you've tried it a few times to not stalk them but to instead actually talk to them. Think about why you're doing it. Are you doing it to make them feel good or to make yourself feel powerful? Because that's a real important difference. Yep. That is the crucial difference. I, uh, I hope you find what you're looking for. Just uh, uh, try to, you know, think of... Think of the opposite sex with empathy. As if this one was complicated. I mean, no. no but that, honestly, this is not simple. even that yeah. complicated. It's just like, we, we receive these sort of questions and we're like, okay, like, are, are we like being baited in some sort of shape or form? And this sounds kind of bad because. But you know, there are, there are co- okay, so this is why this kind of... Oh yeah, we should actually mention that, yeah. Yeah, 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 so we have received three questions that are all to do about like, ooh, in what scenario is it okay to be with someone under age of consent? And there were three very differently worded questions kind of baiting us to try and talk about this. And we are very much aware that the alt-right utilizes these sort of uh, techniques in order to get channels off. So we are never, ever, ever going to touch anything along those lines, even though, like, you know, obviously anarchos, hence, you know, gears, like, who technically, one would be like, this is against your politics, so not, not even touching that, nope. not even going there, go fucking, yeah, deal with that yourself. Or, you know, what was that one fascinating resource that you said? Oh, like, oh, I just mentioned Rookie. Like, if you actually are underage and you're having these questions, there are, like, resources like Rookie, which are written by other underage people but this is not our territory and we are not going there no and if you're trolling us <laughs> how do you troll face it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Try yeah. nice one. Nice yeah. one. Cool. <laughs> and now back to the question. Yeah. What do you think of race preferences in dating? Like people not being attracted to one race or only one. Is this racist? Um oh, this is this is our uh, ice cream truck. It's also the clap. It's song. also the clap. <laughs> no, no, no. So, um No, pretty fucking easy. Um I don't think there is I mean, it's similar to, to the question that we had about, like, uh, different sexualities and or different genders, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about where, where they come from or what race they are. It's for it's as long as they are attractive to us in our own sort of way. So, for me, it'd be more, like, stereotypically attractive, right? For Rome, would be... Filthy you know. mothers. <laughs> <laughs> also, obviously, this is all together with the personality. So, um... I think you would be fine. You would find it very difficult to find anyone that is not overtly racist. That wouldn't find people of a different race or their own race or whatever attracted yeah. to people there. Yeah, race Pretty preferences. Much. Race preferences in general. If you are feeling that, like, uh, if you're a white person and you feel like you're only attracted to white people, I would. That is something that needs to be unlearned that is a product of, of racism. Fact. Like, I do not believe that if there is no one who isn't white that you don't find attractive. However, if you're a POC and you only want to date POCs because white people are shit to you, go full ahead. Like, definitely. Like, there are reasons to not want to date someone of a different race that to do with safety and security and general, like, historic mistreatment. Like, same as certain genders. For but, sure. like... Yeah, there is no justification a white person has for finding every single person of every single other race unattractive. Are you fucking serious? You know how many people there are? You know how many hotties there are? Yeah. It's just nonsense. I mean, again, talking about, like, unlearning behavior or whatever, like, um, sure, like, there is, there is, like, the fear of the unknown, right? You just, like, as I was also mentioning in previous shows, like, I haven't seen a person of color until I was 15, you know? And then I've seen a couple of them while I was in Britain for three weeks and then I came back here when I was 17 so obviously like it was it took a while for me to unlearn behavior of like othering as such and to be like oh that's something or someone that I just I just don't know much about so whether that would be fear or fetishization yeah. all at the same time right so um, but we're not denying that doesn't happen we're denying we're saying that that is something that you go through a process to make happen less but that happened to me and i was able to do that mm. i'll go back i'll go to my relatives in russia right like they're racist is what is and it's sad because they're tatars they're muslim you know and they're yet like i i know that if i were to bring a poc partner they wouldn't be down for that and they would probably not see or not okay not openly say that they find anyone of a particular race attractive yeah and that's really dark i mean again it's for me, it's sad for them because they're like ignorant and they only see people like them, and and so they live a very limited life, you know. And and it's it's heartbreaking for them. Uh, not that I pity them that much, um, but 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 I mean again, not to say that these sort of dichotomies exist, but from from our point of view, yeah. is that like yeah, but that's precisely it. But those those relatives of mine, they're racist. Yeah. And I think the question just doesn't really make sense to me. Like, what do you think of rape presence in dating? Like, people not being attracted to one race. Like, I just don't understand what that question means. Like, not no. being attracted to a race? Like, <laughs> like, what? Like, I'm not attracted to him because he's... I'm not attracted to... Unattractive. Or I'm not attracted to her because she's unattractive to me. Yeah, exactly. But, like, 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 I'm not attracted to most... Yeah, I'm white. I'm not attracted to most white people. Yeah, like, yeah, like I'm only attracted. Of yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna shag. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. So I'm only gonna shag this like very particular yeah. amount of of the whites. And such. Yeah, you know. It's and just, so, uh, like, I understand why this question is being asked, but like, all we can say is like, I don't understand that point of view unless it is coming from racism. And I think most of the time to have that point of view, it is coming from racism, whether like subconscious or conscious. And like, but then again, we just said like, oh, I wouldn't shag like ninety percent of, of the whites, which I also like kind of like think of. But then again, you know, perhaps. But that's like based on aesthetics, right? But if, what if they're fucking amazing and this and this and that, you know, like, and then so you probably fucking will or something. Yeah, then I would. Yeah, yeah. So, but okay, I'm coming from again from like a sort of stereotypical who I find like for me the number one thing is. 100% like if I find them hot yeah. and then I will find out whether they're like kind or not but finding, <laughs> but finding someone hot is definitely something you can change like 
No, but that's not to do with race. That's no, to do, do yeah, race. that's to but do it with can attraction. Be. Like if you find that you're never finding a person of colour hot, that is, I think, a race a racism I just issue. Don't th- how is that how can it be real? <laughs> yeah, but that's what I mean. Because you're you're you've been taught, you've been socialised into thinking this is attractive and who I should be going for and this is not. Like for example, I'm one of those queer people that I actually wanted to be into women and I like decided to be into women. And like but, 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 that's I wasn't literally born this the same way. the same conversation that we had about like what I said is that like the reason why I don't think I'm that straight because I think of like the ugliest man and the most beautiful woman and yeah. I would definitely shag the most beautiful woman right exactly. or not even the most beautiful but the ugliest like I'm now using those sort of dichotomies just to illustrate the point here but um, I think it's the same with I don't know what are races or mm. uh, people I don't know. You know, it's just it's so sad it's 2019 we're having to have this conversation uh, yeah we know we live in London bubble many people don't necessarily live in a space where you do get to see all different shapes sizes sexualities yeah but like you said we're not that. saying that like having an immediate response to something you haven't seen before can't be shocking or no, this or this it can be but you can and you should put the energy into unlearning that and like fucking google hotties from every race and you will oh, wear yourself oh god Stop like, it, I'm honestly like, yeah. I'm a few drinks in, I'm already like, yeah. just thinking about it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, me but, too. Now I'm fe- but maybe I'm fetishizing now, right? I don't think so. Like, maybe I am. Why is it, is it only yeah. fetishizing if it's a person of a, like, a non-white person? But I, I suppose there is that whole discourse around that as such, uh, that one would be, but it's just because it, I know I'm white, more than aware of that, um, and then I guess if I'm thinking of like, should I be attracted of people of different races, that I think about people of different races, so I don't think it's fetish religion. I think it's just like the topic at hand. No, no, I just I, like I'm just I've got old Idris Elba running around my head right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, keep running, baby. <laughs> uh, fuck it, Michael from Love Island, like <laughs> bring it. <laughs> but um, so so but that's um, I met Idris Elba in a pub once. I didn't actually meet him, but I was in a pub and he came in and I texted my friend being like, I think you're in the same pub as Idris Elba. If you don't know it, just he's a sexist man alive. And then he sat down with these he's two a women. Liberal, though. So I know, but I... he sat down with these two women and they were both really into him. And he, you know, he's engaged, he's getting married, his wife is also gorgeous. Like, fuck them both. But um, I would fuck them both. <laughs> but I, yeah, oh my god, one of the best days of my life. It was like just after I just moved back to London. And I was like, this is what London's was a gonna sign. be. <laughs> and then I have not met any other hotties in pubs since. But such is the will of God. Yeah, no, but. That- I just I'm just thinking of Hollywood hotties in my head, yeah. just like all all everyone all of them. Yeah. yeah. White, black, brown, Asian. Yeah. All, all, yeah. Taking out. Okay. But this is that part of the show where we're just like a bit drunk, a bit horny. Yeah, I know. I'm really also because I look so good. I'm like. No, I don't feel like I look good by the way. I don't feel like I look good by my standards, but I'm like I feel like I should be doing something with this outfit rather than just like the second we end ordering a pizza, which is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. Okay. I may have an adventure, but probably won't. It's the last one or is that one after? Oh my god, there's... Oh, okay, there's three more. What, three good ones? Or... I'm not to say that they're good or bad ones, but I know how to say, like, some will, will have to, re- like, respond in text. Yeah. I mean, though, we don't have to do that one, probably. But this one, I kind of want... I don't know. It's like, I want to give them due justice, but I'm kind of yeah, tired. Like... I don't know. Do you want to do the one? Oh. I mean, definitely one more. Okay, one more. Well, we'll see, we'll see what's okay. up. Okay, uh, which one is this? This one is the tree. Do you want to read? Just read, you're holding it. I think it's cute. Do you see how cute you Yeah? Yeah. I don't have much to say except for like, same. Well, yeah, we'll just do that. Okay. Do AA. It's AA. <laughs> My track record features me mainly ending up with guys and guys who are less. Polit- politically articulate slash active than me and I got this crush flirtation on an exceptionally amazing NB uh, non-binary AFAB uh, assigned female at birth human and I've now got imposter syndrome in my career and anarcho and dentistry and I'm very anxious help yeah I mean I constantly have imposter syndrome in my career and dentistry it's cool I will have to say yeah but yeah but that's the thing Yes. How do we help? Like, well, it sounds like you're in a great situation. Keep flirting with this person. Keep yeah. having a sick time. It's fine also to be dating dudes as well. Like, I always have, every time I end up dating a dude, I'm like, oh my god, I'm not being queer enough. Shit. <laughs> like, all the time. And it's a problem because, like, yeah, biphobia is real and fucking active and it's shit that everyone always constantly reads me as straight. And when I do have a crush on a girl, I'm like, 
am I just doing this to seem like more cool and more queer? And then I'm like, you know, looking at a pussy and I'm like, no, I'm doing this because it's sick. So, you know, it's like, it's fine. You'll be fine. Don't have imposter syndrome. You are a cool queer babe and you are gonna have great sex with people of all genders. That's all I have to say. Yep! That sounds good. <laughs> okay. Oh, are we doing this one? This is the one which has like extra thoughts about the Instagram thing. No, that's just, that's, that's, that's feedback. Okay, we cool. Post the rest. Okay, then last one! But we already covered this as well. Okay. Hey, I would like to... Did we? Yes, I mean, in the... Okay, so I'll, I'll read it out, but I think it might end up in the main episode, but not necessarily broken Well, same out, with the one I just did, I yeah. imagine. <laughs> hey, I would like to ask your opinion on the issues of dating someone who is different from you politically. Oh, I see yeah, myself as someone those. who is anti-fascist, intersectional feminist, anti-capitalist. My partner, on the other hand, does encompass those qualities, but on a different level than I do. They are more of a Green Party, disagree with the struggle, but has a bit of an economic point of view. It sometimes does create problems, as I feel like I am very politically involved, and I tend to sometimes separate the two. However, I would love my partner to also be on my level in the sense to make it a bit easier for me and to feel more comfortable. What are your thoughts? Don't say on my the... level. Yeah, what the f- <laughs> Yeah, that's gross. Sorry, I, just, I didn't notice when I first read it when you said that. I was like, ooh. So I'd say go back, uh, look at the, the IWW. Marriage. Yeah. IWW. Uh, tips and... on a wobbly marriage, I think it's called? Yes, it's called IWW and tips on wobbly marriage pretty much covers our thoughts on this because it's someone who is more politically advanced. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is questioning how can they make their partner um, yeah. similarly happy and also number one question on the previous show where we talk all about uh, what it means to be well, this one dating normies one yeah 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 we've yeah we've, we've covered this I'm sorry yeah but, no like, there's not much we can not more but like more um go. one thing if your partner has views and you're looking down on them then you shouldn't be with that person mm -hmm. because she doesn't deserve that or they don't deserve that yeah um, and they probably know you look down on them yeah and hence they probably are like you know what i'm just yeah. gonna be with the way that i am you can like you know seduce people into being like uh have more radical politics which is our method i don't mean seduce through sex i mean seduce to making it seem sexy and exciting which you can do and if they're not interested and they have their own political thing like they're green they're actually in the greens you know then just if you need something else then date someone else to yeah. be honest yes yes yeah and sometimes people that seem to be more liberal are doing way more important work than the people that call themselves the anti-capitalist anti-fascist and anarchist you know mm -hmm. that's all yeah um, that's so true i mean i was actually i was at um, birmingham transformed last week and it is Killed ostensibly it. a Labour Party thing, but actually what was really uh, refreshing about it was that it was like Labour people and Green people and anarchos and socialists of all stripes coming together and like some of the most active, cool and rad people there were like Labour councillors and I normally like, the Labour Party, <laughs> but no, like, don't be discerning of like that stuff. Obviously like Greens have done a few problematic stuff in the last few weeks, which <laughs> don't have <laughs> but yeah, if I'm she's Diane been... Abbott also, like, I'm yeah. not a fan. I'm not a fan either, but the whole, like, exclusion. No, was that like, was fucking weird. Yeah, that was like... fucking dark. Yeah. You know, you can't make your partner more political because you want her to be. She can become more political if she wants to be. But yeah, watch our wobbly marriage video and the first one, the last one, I can't remember what it was called. Let's see. I have no idea what it was called. It was the first one, so just like start the full episode one and yeah, launch yeah, right in. Yeah, yeah, you'll get that. Um, we seriously covered everything? Yeah. That's kind of incredible. Oh, really okay, so there's questions. some questions that are uh, we're gonna answer like by typing just because like they're literally someone being like, Hey, I have this idea for my partner's birthday. Is that a good idea? Which is like a great question. We'll more we than don't know your partner. To. We don't know what she likes. Like, but also, like, I don't think it would be that... Yeah, it's very niche. If it's very niche to the point where like it doesn't necessarily fit the full episode, then we are now getting way more questions that we can answer. Like at the beginning, we got like three questions. Yeah, we'd have to do like re recruitment drives. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah. Now Which is sick that you're sending in questions. Yes. But like we said um, at the beginning of the episode, please do watch our previous stuff and like 
if you think it might have been covered but yours is more specific then write it more specifically yes. so we can like if you're like okay I recognise that you've kind of done this but here's my angle yeah. then we can deal with your angle because like look we're not getting paid for this we're actually losing a lot of social capital on many different many mm. different ways of doing this you know how weird so- it is every time you bump into someone at a party they like know how you like to be fingered like it's weird <laughs> yeah but also some people yeah anyways I'm not even gonna cut co- yeah uh, so what I'm trying to say is that like we're being if you can be generous to us then we'll be generous back to you as in like we're not doing anything that is benefiting us in any shape or form we're not making really any more money than of we're this money. then we're losing money of this so so um, we are actually gonna stand by the thing of like if, yeah, if, if if you can be generous enough to us to have watched our previous content to be asking questions, then that would be that would be. And we're not saying watch everything. Like Mariam is kindly arranging it all into playlists, like along different themes. Like if your question is about dating, check out our dating. But this ones. is a social like, contract, right? We're anarchists, right? We're doing this for you because many of you are doing incredible things to us, right? This is not. This is this is not any. I don't know how to say. It. We are not gaining anything of this. We're losing a lot probably from this. So if you can be generous enough to be fairly concise and or detailed on your on your questions then that would be very good and i know i'm being a bit spoiled here because we're so even thankful that we're even getting any questions but that's because if we're clearly touching a raw nerve here clearly something that we're doing here it seems to be of like huge importance of, of many to many people so in order to make this sustainable for not only practically but also for us for this friendship for this whole setup is, is I want to ask for your respect towards yeah. us as well. Yeah, we want to keep asking, answering your questions. We love answering your questions. We love that you, we are still so privileged that you're giving us your time and your thoughts and your emotions. But we need, yeah, we need you to... There's like a back and forth. And yeah, such, and yeah. because also we have a lot of viewers that aren't submitting questions, that we don't want to become repetitive with them yeah, either, you know? Yeah. like. So yeah, like if you think that we've touched upon it, but not quite, then say, I've watched this video, but I actually have this angle yes. towards it. That would make us feel a lot better than saying, I watched your show, but here's a very similar question. Yeah. Because, yeah. At the end of the day, though, do not underestimate just how fucking huge this is to us. Yeah. We are not saying don't submit questions. We are saying please do submit questions, but keep them precise to you and thoughtful and reflective on what we've done and what you have done. It's huge to us. It's such a privilege to have begun do this, like, literally with, like, six megapixels or whatnot live and and just really with with nothing and no one knowing us and it really took quite a few episodes for anyone to be even interested yeah. in anything and not that we've blown up in any shape or form as such but like we are now recognizing that there are people that are like watching this and getting, and like giving us um you know attention and or their trust and yeah that we, we never expected incredibly this. thankful and it's really down to our connection i think as well so i always want to celebrate our friendship yes. as well because if this wouldn't and it should be a no, form it impossible work. with anyone else and this is why again we've already talked about this this is why we don't necessarily have guests and all this at some point maybe mm. but um this is huge for us we hope we hope you're getting a lot of back from this as well it's fucking complicated we are also figuring a lot of this out as much as you are we are still young and who knows in 10 years time we might have different sort of answers but however what's been fascinating to me is that most of you have been watching and be like it seems like i'm just down with you in the room mm. like and that that's what that's great. all we wanted to do yeah. we want to be your friends that you're having a pint with hopefully you're having a pint while you're watching <laughs> and now that we've been starting doing this like relationship and sex advice stuff like i've been listening to way more podcasts about this and let me tell you most people like do a terrible job like they're either they're either their politics are terrible and they're just giving bad advice or they're just making themselves look cool at all times. Yeah, we so there's no that. vulnerability. We don't look so cool. we don't really <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I mean, thank you, stay rad. Uh, hopefully, please spread us around. Follow Rowan yeah. on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Please, you know, if, if you can share this around, then yeah. that'd be great. Send us a little donation if you can. Other than that, yeah, yeah. let's see. Stay rad. Keep sending us questions. We love them. We love you. Yeah, love like I mean, other. the world is collapsing in so many shapes or forms as is. Then if we can at least have like good sex around it all, then that's that's yeah. that's all we can hope. Seriously. It's like the bare minimum. (laughs) (laughs) Alright guys. Love you. you. Bye bye.